that laugh at me? I'm sorry. It was just a... Hello everyone, welcome back to today's working podcast. I'm your host Jada and I'm here with a fabulous, illustrious... Da, 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 da. Oh, I didn't think that was the word that was coming out, but I'm Caitlin. <laughs> yes. This is I'm the big one. <laughs> You're the beautiful one. You're the one that pops up occasionally. You're mainly in like D&D and some of the vlogs. And... I'm the D&D in vlogs. And there'll be another one because... Yes. Well, no spoilers, but like Jada and I went out on a very illustrious <laughs> trip... Yeah, so you'll see that. It cost an arm and a leg, but like that's separate. And yes, but you know, it was fun, so that, that was a fun trip. I actually really enjoyed that a lot. Oh, so. I did too. I think that, that was something that get, different. Well, they, well, hold on. Do you think this will come out after the video? This will come out before. This will come out before? Yeah, it'll be like this and then the video. Well, if you're listening to this before the video, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so the video will come out for you guys uh Tuesday, Wednesday, depending on where you live in the world, because it's Wednesday for us Australians. Aussies! <laughs> us Aussie blokes, and then I think Tuesday for everyone else, because y'all behind. So Yeah, y'all behind. Y'all peasants, we in the future. <laughs> Do you know what? There's been topics where, um, I don't know where it was, it was on some like Reddit type shit where people are that dumb that they have mentioned that, Australia, why didn't you let us know about 9-11? How are we supposed to know? Exactly, but they because they think we're on the next day. Oh my God. They think that we knew about it. Yeah, but that's just like the really dumb ones. Could you imagine if we were like, yes, we knew about this? Oh yeah, we just kept G- it to you ourselves. Me? I'd be starting to fucking do some lotto type stuff. I know what one wins. How about the Super Bowl? Yeah, I'd win millions. I'd be pay some bets. I'd actually Australians would be having money. <laughs> we would be rich <laughs> and, not, and not struggling. Thanks, ScoMo. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, yes. let's, let's digress. So, what did you want to touch base on today? So I got some questions I'm going to <laughs> ask you. Because when I do these deep conversation uh, podcasts, I like to not tell people what the questions are. Spicy. <laughs> yes, because I like to make people nervous. So well, I'm fine. It's more like, how filtered will my answers be? <laughs> that is completely up to you. Say whatever you feel comfortable with. The first question is... And this is this is what I'm curious about. <laughs> Who did you hurt the most, and what oh. did you do to them? It could be physical, could be mental, could be emotional, spiritual, other forms. <laughs> I don't can't think of celestial. <laughs> um, Just being a god. Okay. Well, this so it's nothing like it's nothing too crazy, but physical. Um, this this is back in ye olden days for me. So I was back in primary school. This is reception year one. Mm-hmm. Oh, I shouldn't name names, but I'm going to use, I'm using, yeah, I'll use aliases. So this young little bitch, T, yeah. was, he was this little gremlin of a child. No teacher ever liked him. Some of the students didn't like him. I didn't like him either, but for some reason, I don't remember it exactly, but he targeted me one day and punched my one of my front tooths out. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So he punched my tooth out. And, well, obviously, I don't actually remember what ha- what had transpired there. Yeah. Maybe I was a bitch to him. I don't know. I <laughs> Could be the case. <laughs> it probably wasn't too surprised that that was the case. <laughs> yeah, but he was the bigger bitch. Oh, of course. Um, so from what I've heard from my mother, she has said that I went up to them and said that T had punched my tooth out, but the school had said that I ran into a pole. That's dumb. Yeah. So then um, T's mother came up to my mum and apologised for him, but my mum was not having it whatsoever. Now this is, so she's, what, my mum is about five, six. She's a big woman. You wouldn't think that she's too scary. Yeah. Until she gets scary. <laughs> it's until the mode kicks in. It's like full on mama bear type stuff. Oh yeah. And as soon as that that clicked, mum pulled me aside and said, you get back at him. I don't know what the hell ran through my mind, but I got one of my old childhood mates, um, S. Oh, I actually know how to, I still remember her name. S and I had <laughs> cornered him at the playground. It's always the playgrounds where it happens. Yep. So she got him onto the floor, but I straddled him. Like, this is when I'm about 
six years old, I think. Yeah. I straddled him and I punched him over and over again in his face. And I ended up knocking one of one or two of his teeth out. And I actually Damn. have a small scar on my hand still from it. But it took the two, the two teachers to pull me off of and also my mate S. So then we had to get to the principal's office and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. My mum stood up and said, no, he deserved it. He did that to her in the school, you know, then, oh, no, well, don't, don't, don't take this any further. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll settle it between the parents. Yeah, don't sue us, please. <laughs> yeah, don't sue us. So my mum and T's mum sorted it out. <laughs> it was just a few Clearly. words. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a few words of payback's a bitch type thing. I don't know what transpired. I was six years old, but I just remember I just, that. I just like to imagine the mums were like, yeah, karma, karma. All right, let's just carry on with our lives. <laughs> yeah. It oh was just God. like one of those deals like, yeah, you got back at my kid. But yeah, okay. So that, I guess that was the physical. Yeah. Oh, with a, I don't actually have one off the top of my head for like emotional. I really don't. I don't think it's very often that people like set out to emotionally or mentally hurt people as much yeah. as like physical as dumb as that sounds no but you're you're right i will me personally i don't set out to hurt anyone emotionally but it does happen in the end yeah like to someone i may have really emotionally scarred them but i'm not aware of it mm. um yeah i can say one for me why you think of it yeah more. so for one again we're just gonna go by letter base it's a bit easier i was oh, trying to think what is the math in this? <laughs> <laughs> we suck at the math as we found today. Uh, oh yeah, well, I'm horrible at math. I I think I was like 15, 16, around that area. Oh yeah, and pubescent, I, Jada. <laughs> I'm not a violent person in general. Like, yeah. it's very hard to get me angry or like have an innate reaction in general. But this one kid, uh, A, he, he decided that to show his love and affection for me, he would beat up one of my friends this girl was younger than me she was 13 you could just hear me inhale because i was actually there to look after her what the fuck because like her parents were a bit worried because her first trip you know without parents i was like yep yeah, i'll be there i've protect. been in that situation yeah. yeah so he went out of his way to physically hurt her a lot because for some reason that would show how strong he is for me and I would swoon for him and some bullshitty thing like that. Male, br- yeah, the type of male ego type shit. Yeah, like, you know, I remember even, like, another, t- like, this is all in the same camp because this was on a camp. Mm. One of the times I was sitting with one of my guy friends and I kind of, like, leaned on him, you know, just kind of, like, lying there for a bit, chatting or whatever, and he got really pissed off that I did that and, like, <laughs> tried to hit him. And I'm like... What, what are you doing, bro? Like, I'm literally, like, just kind of leaning up against him. Like, my head wasn't on him. It was literally, like, you know when you sit sit next to someone? You're kind yeah. of, like, leaning a little bit. Well, it's, oh, when, you're that, when you're that age, they all the teachers just want you to file so close together. Because, yeah. like, sit down and stay put. So you're, like, shoulder to shoulder with people. Yeah, like, we're literally just sitting there. That and fans. then one of the times, like, you know, he kept throwing balls at me. And that's it. I snapped. <laughs> like, and I innately remember this. It was, like, a like a switch in my brain went off and I literally just like dead eyed full on like silent walked up to him and he's like oh did you like that that you know did you like that I didn't say a word I just walked up to him and I like I called the police group like hold the arm behind the back and I just Mm. kept pushing and pushing oh you can break the arm then I I was about to and I like kicked him behind the knees so he would fall Mm. and I just kept pushing and holding and he was like you need to stop Jay like get off me I'm like I just sat there like dead silent didn't say anything. I just kept holding it because he was like, "It's about to break. It's about to break." And I just kept holding it there. And I, I remember the one thing I said. It was very quiet. I'm like, "You deserve this pain. Enjoy it." <laughs> Silent Jade is scary. So I, I just held it there. And then, like after a minute, I kind of like clicked back in. And I'm like, "Oh, I'll just let go of that." And then he walked off, and he actually got sent home. As he should. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, he also apparently did try to grab a plastic knife and stab someone with it. But you know. Look, I I think that's just some severe child neglection there. (laughs) I found out very recently, in fact. Oh. He doesn't remember any of that because I told him. um, Because he was on too many different types of medication. His body doesn't remember anything that happened from when he was, like, 10, pretty much. Jesus. And he's, I think, 19 now? Around there? What a child. (laughs) He, He doesn't remember anything in between. 
Wow. Like, she very vaguely remembers meeting me, and that was about it. Vaguely? Like, very vaguely. And I was friends with this kid for, like, maybe four years or so. And so in the in that four years, did this silent Jada appear, like, at the beginning or at the end, or...? Uh, I think it was, like, near the end. <laughs> the, the friendship didn't end because of that. It was no. just more of, like... So we were both part of St. John. Yeah. And he had gone to a different division and eventually left, and then we just lost connection. Like, yeah. nothing like that. Um, but it yeah. It was a mutual sort of... That was just it. Separation. Not separation, but you just both, just, like, lost contact. It's yeah. Nothing it, crazy. Like, that was it. Like, nothing happened. And I had found out a lot of stuff later, and I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, do you remember it going on this camp? He's like, I went on a camp. I was like, yeah, I was oh, there with wow. you. He's like... I couldn't tell you anything. He's like, I straight up was on like seven different medications. I found out I didn't need it. Jesus. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, Good to know you're still alive, bud. Look, I'm all for like medications to help yeah. stable children. But when it starts to affect their body like that, you could you could almost hear just why, like, mm. by the way you're describing it, he was not in the right state of mind no. at all. And again, I don't How know. Could the parents not like just see that. I don't know if what he's saying is kind of fabricated a little bit. I don't know for sure, obviously, because um, I'm a person who likes to hear both sides of the story before picking a side if I have to. But um, even when changed him recently, he changed a lot more. Like he was very much like, like you know, he was like, "I'm sorry. Like I didn't know why. Like I couldn't tell you why I did that. I do apologize." Like if you're allowing me to could we go out for lunch i will pay for it like i just want to chat if you don't feel comfortable that's fine i understand like he changed a lot more where before he was literally like again a kid he was like you know 14 15 he'd come up to me full on like tr- almost like how the airshays act now very like <laughs> gangster but imagine like this is a while ago Air-shay, yeah bah. and he'd come up to me and trying to impress me and like my uh, good friend or brother Ed was there for one of them. He mm. straight up was like, yeah, you, you know, JD, you should date me. And I'm like, oh yeah, why is that? Ha ha. And he's like, you know me? Because I've done all these different drugs. Like, you know, I did like weed and like, <laughs> you know, random shit together. And I'm like, yeah, that's when to that's, me. That's going to push me back more. And I yeah. looked, I looked at Ed and I'm like, I'm uncomfortable. And like, luckily he stepped in and he was like, I think he's like I think you know she's good type thing and he was like oh you're the boyfriend or something and he was like <laughs> oh no for that one second he was just like yeah sure whatever yeah fine he's like no it's for that I'm, one moment <laughs> he was just like you know what it's worse I'm the brother <laughs> it's worse I'm sorry I lied it's worse <laughs> it's worse but um, I could see him like yeah no sorry can't even say like, that mm-hmm. I'm the brother I'm sorry like, I don't want to be essentially like that that's just worse <laughs> that's worse. But yeah, like, I don't get angry very often. Like, that's the thing. I can count the two times I've been angry. Yeah. Oh, I've seen you pissed. Yeah. I've seen you aggravated. Mm. But seeing you angry. Yeah. I don't... I, have I seen you You've angry? You've seen me one where I was very close to angry, and I count that, and that was the one in here. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's the one I was like, that was close to me, like... And this is, like, a, a childish thing, but, like, when a I was... A tipping point. Yeah. Like, when I was younger, I used to make the joke of, like, I don't have any anger. That's a different person in me. Well, you do kind of switch off almost to a different yeah. person. Like you described, it's a switch. And, like, I... Because I vividly remember, like, literally it was, like, being taken out of my body and watching, like, myself do it. Just dead, silent, like... Almost like, you know when you see the movies and they do the whole, like, <laughs> crack neck, new person appears, like, the whole... And they're like, hello. Nah, I got nothing in me. But do you know what I mean? Like, very much like that whole, like, snap neck. Alright, new person. Yeah. Like, it's- <laughs> like, I genuinely felt like that when I was angry. It was just like a quick, like, snap. Almost like coldness, like, comes over. And I'm like, alright. You so wanna- you're possessed. I'm like, you want to talk? Alright. Let's see what you got. Because I got enough to drag you through the ground and back. But good luck. Mm. So I'm straight up like... Don't give a shit. Got no feelings for you. Yeah. I, I've got too many feelings as it is in general for people. So as soon as I get angry, I'm like... You, well, that's the thing. You off. care a great deal about just... You could care so much about um, an acquaintance. Yeah. Someone who is very minuscule... Min, mis, fuck, minuscule? M- minuscule in your life. Yeah. And you'll 
still care about them like they were one of your dearest friends. Oh, yeah. Which, and then seeing that switch happen, or just any form of pissed, it's like, whoa, everyone needs to take it down a notch. This is getting out of hand. Because that's, we kind of tell, is when you get mad. Yeah, because, like, you know, like... I get frustrated with stuff. That's very normal. Frustrated is It different. happens, especially a lot more recently, just with some certain stuff. But then... Mainly university for me. Uh, Maybe some work. My bosses are different. <laughs> but, like, that's the thing. Like, even at, like, work and stuff like that, there's nothing that, like, upsets me or angers me. I'm mm. like, yep, everything's great. You know, I fess stuff up. That's okay. Like, I'll just keep going. da 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 da, da. Like, I've never argued with any of my friends before. That's never happened. And then it's been, like this year I've argued with a couple of them yeah um I don't want to delve into that too much on here but like you know I I might have started some of them but not because of a like I'm not like oh, I want to pick a fight it's like I've had clarity enough. yeah I'm like yeah. I'm done I'm like I've I've dealt with this bullshit I just don't lie to me but I find that these are the these aren't bad arguments no every friendship you have something you either disagree with or you just need to sort out. Having an argument and sorting it out and mm. still being friends like at the end of it, that is one of the most mature things that you go from the high school mentality yeah. to I'm a mature adult. You're allowed to have different opinions than me. You're allowed to see things different than me. Yeah. That is the clear separation of I don't want to start shit just for the sake of it. It's more like, I want to find out why the fuck you would think or do that. And that's why I love having open conversations with people because it kind of gives people the opportunity to give their opinions and thoughts and whatever. And even if I don't 100% agree, it doesn't mean I need to start an argument because of it. You know what I mean? Like, stuff like that. It could be something very basic as like, you know, I like, let's just say, smooth peanut butter versus crunchy. Like, I will die for crunchy peanut butter. I would die for smooth. But like, see, I'm not going <laughs> to hate you because of that. Fuck no. I'm like, cool, that's your opinion. I'm just going to say... It's not my house, but yeah. you're not going to... Are you kidding me? I'm just going to be bantering about it going, smooth versus crunchy. Smooth will always win. Are you kidding me? You try you try spreading ye crunchy peanut butter yeah, on bread. It's you kidding? Easy. It gets stuck all the time. If you can have smooth peanut butter, just have Nutella. It's better. I love Nutella. Exactly. <laughs> so you're overruled. I win. <laughs> Carry on. No, but that's not crunchy. <laughs> no, but that's what I'm saying. If you want something with texture, if you want something with a little bit of like crunch, <laughs> with crunch, go for crunchy peanut butter. See, well, mind you, I'm a texture eater too. Yeah. I'm very picky with my food. And is that why you don't like crunchy peanut butter then? Because of the texture? No. I, do you know what? If there is no smooth peanut butter, I have no issues with crunchy. Yeah. It's peanut butter in general. True. And I love just like peanuts in general. Like they're great. Yeah. So it's like having two in one there. But I do like the convenience of smooth butter, of smooth peanut butter. <laughs> smooth with butter. <laughs> smooth <laughs> like butter. <laughs> I like how we both put it there. Oh. Yeah, so it's not that I hate it. I just have a preference. Yeah. But, like, I do like me some crunchy nuts. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing, though. Like, that's perfectly fine. Like, you know, we just had, like, an open conversation about that. Yeah. But, like, you know, there are other times where people have tried to start an argument or, like, be very closed in their conversation and I'm Almost like, one-sided. Yeah. I will get pissed off and get very... Not angry. I will get very disappointed in people when it's people start talking around me. I find that disappointment, to me personally, is so much worse than anger. Oh, yeah. If someone's disappointed in me, I feel like I've just failed as a, as a human. Mm. And if... Well, I will say, if my mum's disappointed in me, of course, I don't like that. But if my dad's disappointed in me, I genuinely feel like the shittiest person on earth right now. Yeah. Like, that kind of disappointment. Even from, like, a close friend. Nah, I couldn't do it. I would be grovel groveling at their feet like, no, accept me. Bring me back. Yeah, and, like, I kind of, I agree with it. I, like, I understand anger. And I've said this in the past, but um, to me... Because a lot of the times, like, people have said to me, like, for example, why aren't you angry at your ex? And I said, <laughs> I said, look, I'm not angry at him because to me, anger is such a strong emotion and I have no emotion for him. So why would I be angry at him? Because mm. that means I still care. It's a, it, he was a learning curve. Yeah. As all my family has put it, he was a, <laughs> he was character <laughs> development and a good way to level up in life. And how I like to put it. He set the lowest standard on the bar. 
Yeah, he showed me that there were standards. Mm-hmm. Standards were found after that. Oh, yes. Well, my my ex was pretty much the same. <laughs> yes, we'll delve into that as a whole podcast, because no. I know a lot of you love the love, the love podcasts. So. Okay, yeah, it's more yeah. like that podcast, would, <laughs> we'd be probably talking about the ex, how we've grown, what's happened since then. Oh, yeah. And for me, Hopeless Romantic... I still want the happy, happily ever after type shit. Oh, yeah. I don't get that in this day and age. I, I'm definitely that too. I definitely want the whole, like, okay, I'm going to have a rant for a second. I have been asking everybody I know to give me a damn fucking letter. Does anyone do it? No. Is it's this directed at me? directed at everyone I know. To all my <laughs> friends listening. To anyone who knows me. Do it to any of the oh fans or subscribers. God. Write to Jada. I used to get fan art, thank you. They Actually, gave a shit about no, me. You still have that. I so, still have my fan art. So any, any of Jada's like OG fans, she still has those artworks that yeah. you sent to her. She showed us and all that. Yeah. Genuinely loves and appreciates. And um, not long ago, with the Dakota and um, Jada podcast yeah. about size and if it matters... Yeah. Uh, we got a great uh, fan letter that came in, and yeah, do you know what? That was probably one of the best things we had. It, it was, was so I genuine. Love it. Yeah, like Dakota and I want to chat about it in a podcast, kind of like talking on it. A yeah, bit, just because it was so cool. But like, don't make me go away from my frustration. Because <laughs> like, because for people who are listening, like my birthday passed a while ago, um, like end of September, and everyone was saying to me like, "What do you want for your birthday? What do you want for your birthday?" And I was like, "Just rock up or a letter." That's it. I can vouch for that. She did say rock up or a letter, please. I'm like... Both would be best. I'm like, literally, (laughs) either rock up on time (laughs) or a letter. That's not targeted towards anyone. (laughs) Like, I don't know. I love letters and, you know, cards or whatever. But, like, I think the letter part is so sweet because you can kind of keep that and it's old-fashioned and then the whole, like... The hopeless romantic side kicks in because I'm like, oh, I could put that in like a little box and like trinkety stuff. Like, I have a, a newspaper cutting from when my friend was in the newspaper. Yeah, and, like, I still love that. Yeah, you know, when my friend was in there and like when I go to my friend's graduations for like high school and stuff, like I bawl my eyes out. You're a very memory and like sentimental person. I am, you know, and like oh, he's gonna hate me for this, but um, <laughs> M. <laughs> No, I'll say it. Like, um, so for my graduation for high school, I was supposed to have, so I had uh, B, one of my friends, and I was supposed to have Ed there. Yeah. And he didn't rock up. Oh, snap. The, like, honest, I mean, it's not his fault, mm. but, um, because on the same night he had an awards night, and his oh, parents yeah. like, you're going to the awards night. Oh. And I'm like, that's fine. It's okay. Cries inside. I just wanted my brother there, but that's fine. You know, I was like, whatever, like, it's gonna happen. So I keep saying to him as a joke now, I'm like, if you don't come to my uni graduation... I'm disowning you. I'm gonna be mad. (laughs) I'm like, you didn't even let me come to... Well, I didn't know about your high school graduation. I didn't know shit. I'm like, disappointment. I feel like the uni graduation, that is going to be... Like, because that's only, for us, it's, it's less than four weeks away. Yeah, we finish uni in, like, less than four weeks. Our graduation is next year, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we meet, we miss the cutoff for an overall graduation, so... Which is dumb. I think it's dumb. But mind you, I do want to feel um, loved and be in a stadium full of people, even though I don't even know half of them. We're going to graduate with our <laughs> lecturer. Like, James is graduating as well. <gasps> oh my god, he is too! Oh, we we don't f- even get the spotlight by ourselves. It's with the shit with the lecturer. Hey, we're in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's for anyway. a uni project. Anyway, mm-hmm. back uh, to what we were going on about. Kind of touching a little bit on what you said before about, like, you know, your parents and stuff like that. <laughs> what's a quality of your parents... Wow, I can't read. Yeah, what's a quality of your parents that you have admired the most? Honestly, it would be their, their work ethic. Mm-hmm. And, well... For my, for, well, both my mum and dad are extremely hard workers and have been their whole life. So I was at childcare, so I was at before school care. Yeah. So I could be there at 6am, kill me. <laughs> but I could also leave, I could, I was in the after school care. Yeah. So I could, I would leave 
um, primary school at six o'clock at night. I was usually the last kid there. But mind you, I got a lot of social... I'm a social butterfly, so... So that might have helped, yeah. Uh, it did help. Didn't mean that I didn't want my parents, but that's different. <laughs> so I admire them for their hard work and their work ethic. My mum uh, quite literally went to work the day of my birth. Oh, damn, really? Yeah. The only reason why she wasn't <laughs> taken straight from work to the hospital was because she started throwing up water... Boss sent her home. Not long after, shit, my water's broke. So then my nanny has taken my mum to hospital on that same day. So my mum is a diehard, like, she's just a hard-working woman in general, yeah. trying to make her mark in the world. And she's doing, actually, an excellent job. She's um, one of the only female auditors in Australia, so... Damn, I didn't know that. Fucking fantastic for her. And my dad is just an all-rounded, great bloke. Genuinely, he he drops anything at the like drop of a hat. He'll be there for his friends. Yeah. His work, he's very dedicated to it. Even though I love getting all his bullshit afterwards, he just <laughs> I he, I'm the, almost like the therapist at the end. Oh yeah. It's quite funny to hear the shit that happens at a shopping center. I swear that's what kids are made for to be the yeah. parents' therapist. It's just because, you know, I'm not going to blab to my friends. What the fuck am I going to tell them? I'm going to forget this conversation in 20 seconds. Because you're not listening half the time anyway. Exactly. But nowadays I am listening because it's just genuinely funny. So it's probably their work ethic. But in my family, there's one quality I don't want to follow. I don't want to get a divorce. Ah, family trait. Unfortunately. It's not by choice, but... Could you imagine it was by choice? <laughs> Alright, everyone, you got a year and go. <laughs> we got a deadline. So, unfortunately, my parents are split up. My grand... Both my... No. Uh, yeah. All of my grandparents have split up. So, I have a shit ton of grandparents, yeah. thankfully. And I believe... No, I don't think my great... any, Or well, maybe one or two of my great-grandparents did... Mind you, they had passed when I was in high school, so that's a few years ago. Yeah. But I do believe that maybe there had been a divorce or two. But anyway, from my grandparents and my parents and even some family, it's always been divorce. Divorce, divorce, divorce. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I don't want is a divorce. I just yeah. want genuine connection and love. But at the same time, I don't know what the, spe what the person's going to be like in 20 years' time. They could be an actual douchebag yeah. and then I'd go see you. And it's the 21st century, and that's very hard to get. Exactly. Everyone wants their own way. It, they, there's no mutual understanding anymore. No, it's like my way or the highway. Exactly. Where where has the... It's not that you're trying to settle. It's more like understanding that I'll meet you in the middle. Yeah. You meet me in the middle, I'll meet you in the middle. That doesn't happen anymore. I feel like because people don't do that with their normal relationships as it is anymore. Mm. Someone's always giving 100% or someone is like just not doing enough but they're saying there are and it's a lot of backwards and yeah. forwards. And it's not just... wanting to pay for a dollar chips but that's different. <laughs> that's just the whole thing. I don't know man, it's definitely weird. I know for me, yeah. like I'm very fortunate that my parents are still together but um for example, like a quality that I appreciate in my mom is how family orientated she is. Hmm. It can be a lot sometimes, but she is definitely like family is first. They are the priority. Like you protect almost like you serve, you they are your everything. Yeah. And you know, you do what you can to protect them. And I definitely have done that a lot with friends because I don't have any siblings. So I kind of snap <laughs> imbued that on people and I'm like, alright, you are now my family. I will now protect you at all costs. Of course. Oh la la. Oh la la. Oh la la. And with my father, he's very much the quality that I appreciate in him. He's brain. He's very smart and I do appreciate that. But I like the fact that he... I don't even know how to describe it. I just... Like, his work ethic is great. I love that he always loves going to work and he's mm. trying really hard. He's really... This sounds really bad, but he's really good at trying hard for things. Even if you don't succeed, you try yeah. hard. But that is one of the best qualities you can find because you learn from those mistakes. Yeah, and that sounds really super, but, like, you know, he's trying really hard with losing weight and he's doing well with that. He, you know, like, just even with work, he tries hard all the time and he, 
if need to, he would try hard to be there, like, for me if I need it, or he's good, he's good at being a try hard, mm. which is, like, a weird sentence to say. No, yeah, but it, that actually, that really does sum it up. Yeah, and, like, I appreciate that in both of them, and, uh, you know, I, I love both my parents equally, there's no favouritism to either one of them, but, <laughs> you know, I, I just, you know, I appreciate that, and I think, kind of, like, the qualities, if I had to pick one that I don't like... Because we'll go into that bit. Um, <laughs> dad, and we've chatted about this, like, Dad and I, he's not the greatest when it comes to being emotional. Oh, yeah. And I think that's where I sometimes kind of get that from him. Yeah. Um, like, you know, there was a lot of times in my childhood, and we've discussed this many times, but, like, he would mm. never say I love you because to him, well, you're my kid. Oh, yeah. You should just know that. Automatically. But yeah. Sometimes it's good to hear it. Yeah. And he didn't realise that that was a thing. Like, it's nice to hear things. And I feel like that's a lot for, like, people in general. They don't know you want to hear things, which is a bit interesting. It's, that's what communication's for. Like, so, for my dad, he... So, my mum, obviously... So, when my parents got divorced, my mum had went away. So, I would still went and visited her. So, yeah. it's not like she completely cut me off. But she went away to, I think, yeah, Queensland, Brisbane. And she just, you know, had some time over there. I'd fly over there every second week or something like that. So yeah. That was intense for me. That would have been a lot. But at that time, during, so essentially during that time, all I remember is my dad raising me. So I have, I don't like to say I do have preference. Yeah. I tell my mum more things, but... My dad is my rock. Yeah. He has been there for me for ages and I, for, I'm there for him. Like, honestly, this seems so simple, but one of the biggest, most heartfelt things is my dad taught me how to braid my hair. Aww. It was so sweet. So he had to get his best mate's wife yeah. to help him learn how to braid so that he could braid my hair. And just that alone was so meaningful to me. It is still now. Yeah, I think it's because the effort that went into it. Oh, yeah. It, it was just the thought alone. It was, genu- it, it was genuine. Yeah. He just wanted to be whatever he could for me. Yeah. And now I'm at the point where... I'm helping him. I'm looking after his health. I'm trying to support him. He asked me, like, so we do decision making. So with the house that he has, he says, oh, what, what should we do? Do we prefer this color or that color? And I say, well, if you're doing this, like this gray, try doing with this nice, uh, very light pale blue. Yeah. And then he'll go, oh, but what about this color, this weird cream? And I go, what the fuck are you doing? It's like, no. <laughs> no, don't do that. And he says, no, I see where you're going. So... Yeah, you're treated as, like, an adult now. I'm treated as an adult, like, an equal to dad. Mm -hmm. And, well, I'm an equal, but I'm still, like, his child. Yeah. So that's where my mum differs. I will tell her a lot of things about my, like, personal life, my sex life, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So she knows more about that. I I don't know why. I refuse to tell my dad. No, I feel like it's a very valid thing. (laughs) I refuse to tell my dad. But my mum knows just about everything. And so I have more, not more trust. I just tell her more. Yeah. So that, like, that's just genuinely it. Mum is very understanding. Yeah. At the same time, <laughs> there's definitely times when they're not as understanding. I think no. they're trying to just figure out how to parent. <laughs> but it's also odd because so I have this this beautiful um, tattoo on my shoulder, and. I th- because my dad doesn't have tattoos, he has a fear of needles. I have a fear of injections. Mine developed from him. But he never got any tattoos, but he was never a fan of them to begin with. Yeah. Whereas my mum, she has them scattered all over her. Mm-hmm. And when I told both of them before I got the tattoo, mum almost threw a fit. <laughs> she said, you'll regret this later in your life because she's currently regretting the tattoo she got. Ah, uh, okay. And mine's more... Right now, I adore this. This is... My shoulder piece is my absolute favourite piece right now. Yeah. And, do you know what? In time, that could fade. Because I'll get another one. Not that they need to know. Don't listen to this, parents. (laughs) But But if you are, hi. (laughs) If you are, sorry. I love you. But yeah, it... She reacted so much... So differently than what I had expected. Yeah. Whereas my dad was understanding and thankful that I had told him in advance Mm -hmm. 
Whereas my mum was more on the lines of, you're going to regret it. But she made that odd comment, like, not long ago that she said, so you got to continue that shoulder piece onto your back? And I said, well, yeah, that that was the plan. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. So now I'm fucking baffled with her. With her. She Maybe. hates it and loves it. <laughs> Wants well, more, don't do more. I think it's, she hates it, but she'd rather you get it finished. <laughs> But the thing is, to me, that was finished. I'd love to get the exact same on the other shoulder, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as long as you like it, that's all that matters. Oh, it, this thing will never go away. I don't think I... I don't regret any of my tattoos, and I've got... Oh, hold on. I don't regret them, but there are some that can go away. Yeah. So I've got a stick and poke with my mate on my ankle of a little dumpling, and oh boy, is she fucked. <laughs> But it's kind of cute, though. Mm. You don't notice it if you don't need to. No, you don't notice it. You don't notice the one on my finger very often, Mm. my ankle. No one can see the one on my hip. The one on my forearm, you can see, and my shoulder. But there's a... Like, and the one on my back. Yeah. I got that illegally. (laughs) Well, it was legal there. No. No. Mm. They didn't ask for my ID. (laughs) So I was 17. So the legal age for... Well, actually, I think it's all around the world. 18. Is it? I don't know. But I was in um, Bangkok and I got my first tattoo. My mother was there too. She said go. I love that. Well, I guess parental permission then. Nah. No, she didn't go to the tattoo parlor with me. She was sitting at a pub drinking. And she got... So there was a girl we were staying with. And yeah. She was um, English, I believe. But she was working as a teacher there just to teach English. But she spoke um, the language very well. And we went there together. Her and I. Huh. And I got my tattoo done. That's I almost weird. fell asleep in it too. It was actually very relaxing. Yeah, because I am looking it up. You have to be at least 18 years of age. Yeah. It is against Thailand state law to tattoo a minor, even with parental consent. Yeah, I was 17. Huh. They didn't ask for my ID at all. Mind you, with my assets, yeah, I don't look 17. I did look older than what I was. And with the girl I was with, she was obviously older too like mm-hmm. she was in her mid-20s so that alone was probably enough for them that were like all right whatever just yeah. sign the consent form and i think i must have ticked i'm over 18 i don't know but i, don't know. I was 17 i got my first tattoo <laughs> it's interesting like i quickly looked it up and apparently in spain you can be between the ages of 14 and 17 Oh my god, I should have gone to spain bro oh, i would got a full sleeve that's dumb as fuck why would you do that 14? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, I know. Well, they would have some traditional tattoos that they have over there. But like 14? Okay, yes, that is going a little. I get little like early. Six, like it, I can kind of understand 16, 17. I get 16, 17. I feel yeah, but that's when you a lot of young ones are in their rebellious stage. Yeah. So I feel like that is where the most amount of regretful tattoos occur. It's just... Uh, but I don't it's care. so dumb. At the time, it was meaningful to them. Oh, I mean, yeah, but also... <laughs> <laughs> Watch them just get... Um, oh, I'm, I'm sick of seeing infinity tattoos, that's for sure. Sorry to anyone who has one, but yeah, I'm sick of seeing them. They're a bit... Nah. They're overdone now, overworked. Yeah, you know, like, the tramp stamps, how that mm. was, like, a thing... I, like, I feel like that might be coming back soon. Well, people are calling the ones, like, under the ribs. You know, like, the ones, yeah. like, the tramp stamps of our generation. Under boob. Oh, I yes. do it. Yeah. I would definitely go with that. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, a lot of people kind of get, not, like, just on they ribs, get, but, like, under boob. They get boobs the middle, or, like, the, yeah, like the, the sternum. That's yeah, well, it's, fine. like, it's kind of, like, a almost like a, a really relaxed W. Like, yeah. Like, that section. Yeah, so it goes right under the tit, or even for males, it goes under the pecs. But I find a lot of, um, a lot of um, people are getting... A dagger, scissors, or a knife, mm. anything like that, right down their sternum, and it yeah. has like an insect on it. It's a bit like weird. A bug, a moth, anything like that. I don't mind it. I think they're gorgeous, but, but why in that the is very overused now. Because, like, why in the middle? Like, I don't get that part. Like, why in the sternum? I think symmetry. But well, like, you could put it anywhere else. Well, I do think if you did have it in the sternum, it is very symmetrical, and I would find. It would be so aesthetically pleasing to look at. I guess. I was just thinking because like it might get lost. No, it depends on how much tit you have. That's With me, it... you're, there's no hope. With you, there's <laughs> still no hope. That's what I mean. Like, so, 
I some mean, people don't even, have giant bazongas like us. But even some of the dudes do. So, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. I Look, I see... I see the reason why they like it is because of symmetry, because that's why I would like it. Yeah. But I wouldn't get it there. Oh, I wouldn't. No, I might get a dot there. Don't get me wrong. But mind you, it's already <laughs> just lost. Just a single dot. Yeah, just a dot. So I got a tattoo right here. Do you want to look? I have to spread my tits apart. <laughs> oh my God, what a conversation. That would be amazing. <laughs> okay, why, why are we back on tattoo? Oh, it's okay. So <laughs> yeah, we'll go back. Anyway, so next question onto that. Yep. Um, so if this is the story of your life, what would you call this chapter? <laughs> so you can either say like, I like to say like every year is a new chapter. So if you want to do by like subsections. No, like, I know. don't think every year is a new chapter for me. Mm-hmm. Mine's every almost emotional or mental milestone yeah. is my new chapter. So I feel my other, oh, I feel actually probably in the last two months, maybe a little less. I feel like I've started a new chapter and so my ex and I had split oh, oh two two years now and ever since then I like for a year I was on and off with some guys rebounds or that guys I was interested in second place all that sort of fucking bullshit yeah I feel like so the end of the uh, other relationship was a chapter and then me stopping with the wanting a partner mm-hmm. was that and from there I became self-sufficient and independent yeah that was a big big learning curve and a big block of my understanding of myself mm-hmm. and just these two months that have passed I feel more put together yeah. I yeah I feel as if I can actually start getting my future in order I don't want to start planning shit because there's no way in hell my plans are going to work. Yeah. We all know that future. the future is never as we plan. But I'm hoping to buy myself a house next year. Um, and I, that's like one of my big stepping stones. I've already got comfortable work. Yeah. I'm doing... Well, I like to think that I'm doing well with my degree right now. You are, definitely. And uh, mentally, emotionally, I'm doing fucking wonderful. Yeah. Mind you, don't get me wrong, I still have some crippling anxiety, but that's but different. Like, as an overall, though, you definitely are doing a lot better. Yeah. I actually feel my fashion, uh, my sense of style is evolving and becoming better. I think it was layers. Layers. <laughs> layers worked. <laughs> but I don't know. I like how you say layers, and I'm like, I think I've seen you with less layers lately, but <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hey, it's warm. I'm like, which layer are we talking about? Well, how about I wore three layers today? Uh-huh. So I had my dress underneath a long sleeve shirt with this over the top. Yes, but I think that's the only time I've seen you... Well, I haven't seen you... Fully wear... covered for a while? Yes. <laughs> i got no issue with that. And we're coming into summer. We were just yeah. in winter, so I don't know what you're talking about. True. Mind you, yeah, I don't mind showing cleavage. Yeah. I can't hide it. <laughs> yeah, no, I get the that. The only time I can, I have to hide it is at work, so I'll wear a lot of full coverage. But, um... I'm not afraid to have my tatas out there. Yeah. It's nothing crazy, but I feel this might... It's not... I wouldn't even say I'm coming out of the cocoon. Because I've passed that point. That was when I was independent. Yeah. I found my independency, and now I'm so reliant on myself that I don't know if I can find a guy anytime soon. Yeah, you're just kind of like, I'm in the next step. And unfortunately, I'm straight. (laughs) Yeah. Unfortunately. (laughs) Unfortunately. Oh. But, yeah, I don't, like, don't get me wrong, there's guys that have, like, gone stunning. But I haven't been wanting to talk to them or in any sort of romantic, like, conversation. I, I used to just, like, always constantly talk with guys, like, as best friends, friends. I grew up around guys. And now that's kind of just, like, stopped. And now I'm just, like, hanging out with myself, girlfriends. All that. I'm hanging out with less and less guys. Yeah. So I'm finding my tolerance for them is... <laughs> it's so much less. It's so much less. Yeah. That I dumbnitude. Oh, God, it drives me nuts. I don't know. Like, for me, I've definitely stepped into a new chapter for this year. Um, oh, you have indeed. I've <laughs> changed a lot. And not just my hair. <laughs> <laughs> 
But like, I think definitely from like your as hair soon was as you just breaking away. Yeah, and that's what it was. Like as soon as this year kind of started, realistically. Mm. Yeah. I was just like, stop it. I'm gonna kind of live my life for me and try and dress how I actually want to dress. I want to do the stuff I want to do. You know, go for those goals I wanted to do. Like I'm gonna get and like I, my plans were to get another job, to do all those types of things. I did that. I got another job. I cut my hair short. You're thriving. Like, I, you, yeah. You, the goals you set, you've accomplished already. Yeah, which I'm very happy about. You know, I wanted to try and be a little bit more confident. So I, I've been working on, like, body confidence for the past, like... Oh, I got you covered, two, baby! Yeah. Like, I've been working on, on and off uh, last year because last year was just a total destruction and chaos for everything I ever did. But you have so much more appreciation for yourself now. Yeah, and I think that's why I worked out well. I was, you know, mentally kind of quite low. Well, not even mentally, but, like, I guess emotionally quite low last year. Mm. And so destroying myself... Not that I actually say anyone should do this. This isn't a tip, but like, you know. If you're going through that stage I, right now. Yeah, I felt like I was just a, genuinely just a person walking around broken repetitively. And then I kind of got to this year and I'm like, what? No, fuck that. I'm done. Get rid of you. Let's fix this. You know, let's kind of be who I want to be. Let's hang out with people and, you know, work more and do whatever it is I need to do. Let's kind of improve myself more and more. And I got... Obviously, I'm still going to forever improve myself, but I got to a point where I'm like, okay, feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm like, tight. I'm going to tell the the guy that I like that I like him. I'm going to. You did it so well, too. You know, like. He just can't come. He's just not (laughs) reciprocating right now. You know, and like, that's fine. And like, you know, you know. And (laughs) I'm improving myself more and more. I'm just going to keep improving. And so I felt like a zombie's this sound, but like, you know, I kind of closed the chapter. Not only on that particular relationship, I closed the chapter on that version of myself. Yeah. And so, you know, ch- like, I guess you could say, like, the 20 chapter or the 20s chapter. Yeah. Well, because, you know, it's like 21 onwards. Yeah. I definitely have, like, kind of flicked into gear more. And I'm like, all right, let's start doing stuff that makes me happy. It's It feels like that number, like 21 or just before yeah, 21. 20. Yeah. It's the fuck i'm that i'm that age now yeah let's act like it yeah because i've always seen myself as like kind of like a mature person and Mm. like i've never really like thought like oh mucking around is fun or like going eccentric with clothes or whatever i'm like no i need to be practical Mm. i always wore comfy clothes because if people need me and they hug me it's comforting they feel like oh the clothes are warm the clothes are soft whatever i feel good then yeah half the time wasn't even do I feel okay? And it's they're gonna feel good hugging me, or they're gonna see me, but like they look comfortable. Yeah, that is a comfort. You, you portrayed yourself as the comfort character. Yeah, and while like obviously yes, I still kind of wear those clothes because I feel comfort in them as well. I'm trying to do more things, or I'm like no, I like wearing this. Let's try this out, or like well, you and the corset today was fantastic. Are you kidding me? Stop it! But you keep look going. fucking. You looked <laughs> like. You stepped out of Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, and, like, I love that shit. I love, like, dressing like that. Like, you know, I got told, what was it, like, uh, Monday night, I looked like a librarian. I'm like, you know what, I'll take that. That's true. Yeah. I would love to be a librarian. If so, I fucking love books. Yeah. I've Give been, me books. <laughs> I've been told I look like a librarian, and another time, I've been told I look like a hot librarian. I'm like, I will take that. Hey, if <laughs> someone tells you you're a hot <laughs> librarian... I'm like, what books are we reading together? I want to know. <laughs> what smutty shit you into? <laughs> I love how you're like smutty. I'm like, let's just read books together. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, if they want to read books with you, they'll call you the librarian. If they call you the hot librarian, bro, I want to read. They books. have all types of scenarios running through their head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh. From your straight white friend. <laughs> I like it and white. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> I didn't know that. It's it's definitely interesting kind of this particular year. Like, you know, next year I'm moving out and kind of pushing myself a lot more and I'm very proud of that. And I'm kind of 
working on stuff myself or doing things not because of other people as much but because like I can do it for myself yeah and that's nice it's a new change I'm not constantly like I mean I do still do it probably a decent amount where it's like right I'm going skating I need to bring two jackets so that I know that the two other people who get cold all the time have a jacket I was gonna say, but they are they are always new yeah jackets. well like you know I'll bring a phone charger I'll make sure cables I always bring an extra water bottle like that part of me the like mothering side of me mm. I don't think will ever stop but I've learned now that I can kind of as dumb as it sounds like mother myself yeah you need to then take care of yourself as well yeah like I'm starting to do that a lot more instead of just like completely destroying myself you know like it, I'm just kind of building myself back up again as well as building other people up yeah you are focusing more on yourself and if others are picking up themselves with you or you're also it's not holding as long as it's not holding you back yeah. then that is some of the most purest best learning learning steps you can do in your life yeah you learn to grow and others see that and they want to go with you yeah it's kind of like when you this sounds really weird as an analogy but like if you're all walking together as friends mm. before like if someone would fall i would obviously like run back check if they're okay and let them go ahead and i would stay behind the group to kind of watch everyone to be like okay if you're gonna fall i'll pick you up kind of i let everyone go in front of me exactly that's that's a good analogy whereas like this year i've kind of gone no i'll walk with everyone else if someone falls i'll help them up and we'll all stand together and, and we'll, we'll keep going because you know you know, if I trip, hopefully someone will be there for me. And, like, if someone else trips, they know I'm there. And it's it's a balance now. Mm. Not like, oh, I know that, you know... It's, it's not like, a, oh, I know that they're kind of expecting me to help them. They yeah. expect me to be there when they call. They expect me there on the second. Obviously, I'm yeah. still working on that a bit, but... Yeah. It's getting well, there. For me, personally, when it comes to that sort of situation for me to you i feel like yeah if i'm ever in such a fucked up fuckery sort of fucked up situation i go hey jada help yeah and i would be there and then i know that you'll be like fuck do you want and i'll be like <laughs> help oh my god like, i'm not fine it's like fine. Whereas that's what i would that's what I would get from anyone else. Yeah. If you, I will be there at a drop of a hat. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to be like, fuck, I don't want to drive to get you. But of course I'm going to be saying that whilst I'm driving to get oh, you. Oh, yeah. Like, I will complain countless times. I'm like, oh, I'm stopping my D&D for you. I was watching Critical Role for you. Yes. But if I'm at the house. For me, it's like, <gasps> I stopped my Markiplier for you. Or Miss Vicious Murder Mystery. Exactly. Like, if I've stopped my shit for you, I enjoy. Shut the fuck up and let me help you. Exactly. If it's a dumbass response you give me, I'm gonna get pissed. But like, even yeah. then, I'm just like, I'm just grumpy. I'm going back to bed. I'm but old. I find that I, I'm more than capable of, capable of handling my own issues. Yeah. I've learned to do that myself. That's why I have tried not to rely on you too much in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Is because I actually want to see you start doing that for yourself. Yeah. So when I can pick, I can fucking pick up on cues so fast. <laughs> That if I can see that you're winding down and starting to shut off, that's my cue to get the fuck out of Dodge and yeah. let you settle. Yeah, because like... Recharge. <laughs> I'm good at dealing with my own mental stuff a lot of the time. There's obviously a couple of times here and there that like, it falters, but that happens. But that's a normal human being. Yeah, like everyone kind of goes through that. I think I just kind of... I know definitely in the past, um, what was it like... Or even like the beginning of this year as an example... Mm. Like, I exhausted myself out way too much. And I learned from that. Yeah. Like, it got to the point where, like, my body just couldn't move. It straight up could not function. Yeah, you... There was one day where it, you just wore yourself out that much that you were bedridden. Oh, yeah. You'd forgotten to eat. You'd... It was, like, it was horrible. But it was because, like, that month, I'm like, cool. I saw someone every single day. I was with people every day. I was doing something I like organized stuff so that ha stuff was happening every day and I just didn't like eat as much as I normally did I cut back on a lot of stuff and I was really anxious and then one of the days I just woke up and I'm like I can't move and that scared me because I'm like I 
I can't I, I literally like I couldn't move anything everything was frozen and I'm like it caught up to you finally yeah and I'm like well, what do I do yeah luckily there just happened to be nothing planned that day but I'm like shit shit I your body move. probably already like you probably your body had recognized that this is my down day yeah. and you stayed the fuck down yeah and it scared me and I'm like alright I've learned now what is like my peak I need to not do that as often I've kind of always been like that since a kid but for some reason I'm like no constantly like I'll just do stuff so now I'm like okay if I see people like if it's like you know a big hangout Mm. then the next day I'll try and like either sleep in a bit more or maybe I won't see someone until like the evening or you know vice versa depending yeah you know I can probably do like two days depending on who the people are but anything more than that I'm like all right I need to clock out or I'm going to be exhausted I'm going to kind of lose it yep and it, it sucks so that's kind of a thing but no, that is what I learned for myself when I became the independent me mm. I learned that fuck that I need more me days and you can tell that I just take days for myself now yeah I work my ass off I'm at uni now most of the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it depends which is it, fine it depends but I am I do make sure I take at minimum one day off for me. Yeah. One full day off. And I try to make sure make sure that the next day I either start later or I have enough time that I can build my way back up to being a social butterfly again. Yeah. Because fuck me does... I need to recharge my social batteries. <laughs> yeah, no, and I definitely like agree with that. It just gets exhausting after a long time trying to... Not keep up a persona of yourself, but just to kind of like, be like, hey, like chat with people, socialize with people, everything's okay. And in my head, I'm like, are they okay? Do they need food? Do they need mm. drink? Are they, oh, they look a little tired today. Why is that? And I'm like constantly thinking of everyone else. And now I'm including myself and I'm like, okay, I'm more tired. Yeah. I'm getting sleepier. Well, actually kind of on that persona base, I, because of the people that I hang out with, I have different personas for each person. Yeah. Because there's different topics or different things I go to the people about. So there's different things that I, I will portray more. So yeah. Like I put, for you, oh, I'm not, actually I don't fucking know what I put on for you <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I'm just very, uh, you're just kind of there. I'm, I just, whatever comes out, comes out this yeah. point. Yeah. But hypothetically, with one of my um, girlfriends, M, I will put more of a um, confident, um, confident front, and I will make sure that, like, because we're high school mates, I have at least something to talk about that we did in high school that yeah. we do now, or anything like that, and then we move forward and we'd have mature conversations. So I have almost a bubble that I have with her, that I have these almost conversations. Yeah. Of course we branch out from that. Don't get me wrong, we do. But there are specific things I go to specific people about. Oh, and yeah. And there are specific things I do with them. Like, dumplings. <laughs> dumplings, yeah. No, I agree with that. Like, you know, with my uh, high school friends, I'm friends with the twins from high school. Yeah. And with them, when it's just us hanging out, I'm very quiet. And not because it's like a, oh, they won't let me talk, whatever. It's nothing like that. It's just more of like, I generally like listening to them talk. I like hearing the conversations. And they're both quite loud people. <laughs> they're very loud people. I mean, they have to be because, like, uh, Kate, she is, like, partially deaf still. Emma got that fixed when she was younger. Kate, unfortunately, it just didn't work for her as much. Mm. So they're both used to speaking quite loud for each other and themselves. It's become... It's, it's a trait of theirs now. It is, yeah. And that's why I don't mind as much to kind of be a bit quieter and like sit back and I like watching them like kind of banter and give each other shit and you know we can chat about high school stuff and whatever fandom Kate's into at the moment and like you know (laughs) whatever what pad book is up yeah pretty much and like you know that's nice to do but then with like Erin well I've known her since like the beginning of primary school I definitely play into that older system mum role for her Mm. a lot and, like, we'll still have, like, conversations. But, like, I remember the first time she tried to have a conversation with me about, like, details of her love life. And I'm like, but you're my baby sister. What are you doing? <laughs> or, like, you know. See, for her, I talk witchy shit with her. Yeah. That's straight up one of the big things I talk to her about is just witchy shit. Because it was weird, I guess, for me. Because I went from, like, a, okay, like, you know, we're really little. You know, we're playing on the playground to, hey, we're talking about who our favorite 
like doctors from Doctor Who. Our favorite actor and that we're in love with, Jason Momoa. <laughs> you know, like we talked shit like that, and it was very like I guess kind of like neutral stuff when you think about it. Mm. And she got to high school, and we went to different high schools. We'd still see each other, but then like you know, it was like maybe a couple years ago, she had briefly mentioned that like you know something to do with her love life and like her own personal love life and I was like wait what I was like wait you're not the age for that no no you are <laughs> still seven what are you doing because <laughs> in my head I'm like you are a child how dare you and I'm like no Jada you need to shut up she's had partners it's fine but Sorry, in my mom, head I got <laughs> no, <you're fine. laughs> but like you know in my head I'm like no no she's she's a child she's my child she's my baby yeah you I know? helped raise her literally I was like I felt like I co-raised this kid like you know <laughs> But, like, that's when I don't say that my personality has changed. It's just more, like, some parts of them are more elevated or more amplified yeah. with certain people. Which I don't think is a bad thing. But, yeah, that's exactly right. You said it perfectly. They're amplified with yeah. the people. Some subside, some amplify. It, that's just how it is. Yeah. You know, like, with Ed, my brother from another mother. <laughs> what a stupid <laughs> sentence. Like, I'm very, like, kind of normal with him. But I'm also very much, like okay, what do I say? What do I don't say? I always play the, I need him to think that I'm a strong person. I want him mm. to think good of me because I am his older sister. It's the deep, deep conversation. Yeah. And like, I literally was chatting to him before and I was saying like, cause I was explaining some stuff about X or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry if I upset you. Cause he didn't know anything until recently. And he was like, it didn't upset me. He literally was like, but I just thought you were a strong enough person. And that's when I was like, shit, I've ruined the whole mantra I put up. Yeah. And then literally like a second later in the uh, video message, he's like, no, no, you're still a strong person. I'm like, how did you read my mind? <laughs> he's no, like, you're still strong, but like vulnerability? He was like, no, you're still a strong person. He's just like, I never expected you to go through that because I thought only not strong people would, the week. would get out of that particular scenario. And mm. I was like... So even now, I'm still, like, thinking about it. And I will for a couple of weeks. Kind of being like, I'm now, like, not as strong in his head now. And that, to me, is an immediate, like... It's almost like that disappointment. I feel like I disappointed him. Even though I've got no reason to. No, yeah. In your mind, you feel like you've disappointed him. Yeah. But maybe to him, Ed thinks that, wow, she's showing more human than yeah anything. Because you showed a part of you that was vulnerable. Like, I went through this. Yeah, that was it. Like, he's very supportive, but I think it was the shock of, like, oh, you went, you, through. You went through this. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's interesting how different people act up and play and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. Speaking of people. Oh, no. <laughs> this, one, this one's a tough question. Oh, shit. If you were forced to pick someone to kill you, who would you make pull the trigger? So I have a crippling fear of death because I don't know what happens afterwards and I get very bad panic attacks when this happens at night. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Because I'm like, do I do it based on someone who hates me? Do I do it based on someone who loves me a lot so that they kind of... But then that's just mean. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm like, who would... Can I choose to die in my sleep? (laughs) Does it to self so it's not a timer? (laughs) Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. But the thing is, that is a very hard question because I don't want my death to be unjustified. But I don't want to give the satisfaction of someone I hate pulling the trigger, but I don't want to put someone I love through that. Yeah. that's. See, it's kind of sad. I can think of one person, but I don't think they'll do it. <laughs> it doesn't matter if they will or won't. Because this just, is the one person... Forced to. I, I'm going to say they get the option to kill me first. That sounds so bad. Because <laughs> my tier list of people. Oh, um, yeah. I'm going to cycle through that shit. See, it's difficult. Because I would have said Ed. Just straight away. But, because I feel like he would understand if there was a reason to. I feel like he would emotionally recover. Yeah, and I think that's where my problem then starts to kick in. Because I'm like, yes, it will be hard for him. And I know how he would work because he will see that Erin's upset and he will kind of try and look after her. But I don't think she would let him because Mm. he did that. So I'm assuming, because how I'm doing this in my head is like, 
they have to kill me because like either let's just say i don't know something really bad has happened to me it would like release pain whatever you know what i mean like yeah, it would be what? a better option hypothetically you guys got into a car accident that i don't know how but there's a gun in the car and you are in excruciating pain and yeah. death and you wish death upon you right now who's that person in that car well you? that's what i mean like who would release my pain more because i would never make Aaron do that i she she cries if i stub my toe like i'm not making no her do that. that could that wouldn't be an Aaron thing i couldn't you do you know what? It, for you, Ed might be the only one who could be able to, like, mentally prepare yeah. himself to do that. I think he's the only and one still survive that I would kind of trust to do that. This is going to sound horrible. Either him, or I'd probably ask Matt to do it. Depending, yeah, but even in your D and D session that you guys did, I don't think he's gonna <laughs> like that. <laughs> I don't... See, here's the thing. I don't know if you'll like it, but depending on the scenario and future scenario-wise, if, you know, I feel like I would leave it up to those two to decide. I, oh, yeah, I don't... I, the two boyfriends. <laughs> They're boyfriends for each other. Are you kidding me? Because I, I couldn't put it on... Like, I couldn't put it on you or Dakota or Alyssa. I couldn't put it on Aaron or B. I, the sad thing is, if someone did ask me and they... I'm someone, if you tell me everything that's happening, yeah. why, I can actually process whatever it is and whatever it needs to get done, I can do. Because in my head, I would kind of give it to one of the two boys to do because I'm like, okay. In my head, who I think people will be sad if I pass will be Aaron and like family it would be like Elijah and mm. Shanna and I would hope that like I mean, I know the rest of you guys will be, but I'm saying, like, like you know, like, really distraught. I think definitely, like, Aaron and uh, Shan. The lifelong... Yeah, so family. I would... And, and Elijah. So I'd be like, okay, that's why I'm kind of going. I hope that, like, you and Dakota would kind of possibly, obviously, still be upset, but check on Aaron for me, or... Be the rock Kind of needed, just yeah. a check on them and help. Whereas, like, Ed, I know... We've Self-sufficient. Had, well, yeah, but also we've kind of chatted about this in the past. Mm. I said to him, like, if Weird I... Weird fucking topic. <laughs> well, that's the type of conversations we have, but I said to him, like, if I ever get dementia and I forget who my partner is, or if I have kids, like, if I forget them, mm. I said, can you please just pull the trigger? I said, just please, because I don't want to live in a world where I don't remember my own loved ones' names. Yeah, your biggest fear is dementia. Because that will terrify the shit out of me. It will terrify me seeing my own husband or kids walk into the room and then be like hey and i'm like who are you who are you that's when i would literally like sign a form like he only ed has permission to do this yeah i yeah your pull the trigger is ed i think yeah definitely ed and if he can't that's why i'm hoping either matt will say something to kind of help ed or just kind of helping hand to pull yeah if need to he will take it because I hate this. In a hypothetical world, let's say if Matt and I were a thing, I'm just going to use him as an example. (laughs) If we were a thing and if he was my partner, I would rather my partner do it. While that's a horrible thing to say, if I'm, again, not remembering them or if it's a painful thing, I want him to kind of be like the last word or the last face I would see. So kind of that versus someone else who would be angry with me killing me. Yeah. I'd rather be out of love than hate. Mm. I guess. It's, it's it's the whole aftermath, like, do you want to put them through that pain or, or like, the yeah. whole understanding. Anyway. I'll straight up ask Ed, see what he says. Actually, yeah, text him say, hey. <laughs> I'm going to send him a message and be like, okay. Hey, I'm doing a podcast at the moment. I'm doing it with Caitlin. Hey. One of the questions that we have is, who would you pick to basically, like, pull the last trigger or whatever? And I put it between you, Ed, and uh, Matt. Would you do it, yes or no? <laughs> Alright, let's see what that comes back with because... Put, it, put in the poll below. <laughs> yeah, hey, what's your poll? <laughs> but like, yeah, like in a real world, like if I had signed all waivers, you weren't going to get arrested, no legal shit, like... Do you think you could do it? Would you actually pull the trigger to kill me, yes or no? So, I'm going to send that to Ed and to Matt. But you said Ed. You I Ed. said to both. Oh. You Ed and Matt. We'll see. We'll okay. see. I think only Ed was wrong, but we'll kind of... 
Ed may be the only to apply. <laughs> Ed's but... going to be like, this is a normal conversation. Matt's going to be like, what the fuck? Yep. <laughs> He's going to be like, I'm on vacation. I don't understand. <laughs> Oh my god, hey, on vacation, hey, this maybe girl that I'm interested in said, would I kill her? <laughs> Straight up, he's like, I'm gonna sit by the bar drinking an espresso his, martini. In his culture king outfit. <laughs> drinking an espresso martini, and he's just like, what the fuck, Jada? <laughs> Jada, are you okay? I'm just like, <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> fuck, where is that? That's just like the, for the beach. Yeah, but where about the Henley? Beach? That's a Henley. Oh, oh. It was my own stomping grounds. It was the dinner anniversary. Oh my god, would you kill me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Alyssa in the back, like. <laughs> Let's try this again without muting the microphone. Grappled, take one. So, what is grappled? A grappled creature. Redo, take two. A grappled creature's speed becomes zero, and it can't benefit from any bonus to its speed, meaning it can't move. The condition ends if the grappler is knocked unconscious, or if the effect of the spell, grappled, or anything else similar, has been taken away, like counterspell or thunder wave. Alright, take two, because I need to do that a bit quicker. So what is grappled? A grappled creature basically has their movement to zero. It can't benefit from any other speed bonus. It is stopped dead in their tracks. The only way that this can be fixed is if the grappler is removed or if the effect is removed by using counter spell or thunder wave. I feel like I butchered that more. Let's do one more take. Oh shit. Let's change. Eh, let's leave it. Fuck it. All right. Take three. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> oh my god. Grappled. So what is grappled? Basically, a grappled creature, their speed becomes zero, and it can't benefit from any bonus to its speed. Alright, the mouse move. Take four. So what is grappled? A grappled creature... Take five. So what is grappled? A grappled creature's speed becomes zero. It can't benefit from any bonus to its speed. The condition can only end if the grappler is knocked unconscious or if the effect is removed by either a counter spell or a thunder wave. I don't think I have anyone. That's fair. Like, that's... Would Sad. You, would you have anyone, let's say, like, if you were on, like, life support, would you pick anyone to be like, they can give the approval to kind of... You know what I mean? Yeah, unplug me. Yeah. Like, is would that be, like, more of a thing? I don't... I just don't know. Because as much as I'd like for a friend to be the one to do that... Yeah. I just don't think that's what I would do. That's fair. But I wouldn't want to put it down to my mother or my father. I couldn't put that on my dad. No. Your dad would not like that. My dad wouldn't cope. (laughs) Your dad would be so upset. Oh, I think that might be the only time I see him full on blubbering, crying mess. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I can't put it on my mum. I I don't know who I... I just don't think I'd even put it on friends. Yeah, maybe like just not anyone at the moment. Not that there should be anyone. No, but you know what? I don't think there's a person that I'd let (laughs) pull my plug. Yeah, that's fine. You don't have to. I feel like it would be somewhat similar. I'd let my partner have that kind of, not power, but... I'd let them have like the last moment. The last moment because it would be the last face I'd see or... If I'm already in coma, like, I'm vegetable fucking. Yeah. I'm comatist. I'd be able to be a lot more at peace if I knew that it was them and not anyone else that they're putting it on to because they could probably yeah. handle it. No, I get that. I think the only reason why I'm thinking, like, 
it's kind of sad. I'm like, hmm, maybe Ed or Matt because they both <laughs> know well, how to use a gun. So I'm like, at least they know where to hit. Honey, I know how to use a gun. Are you kidding me? I'll shoot you. <laughs> One is like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. I don't know why. I feel like they're just like, yep, got my normal gun ready, got my license. Let's go. Yeah, I can't depress people. I don't people. think there's anyone I would. That's fine. It would be my f- partner. You don't have to have someone. Like, I'm not being like, choose your partner. No, now. but like, it's making me think of everyone. Like, there was one that crossed my mind, mm-hmm. which was, he's actually, he's not fan. well, he, to me, he's family, but blood related, he's not. Yeah. It's actually my quote unquote uncle. Mm-hmm. He's my dad's best mate, and I find that he's one of the most genuine guys, but at the same time, he needs to pull his shit together. Yeah. (laughs) That's separate. I feel like because he's a mutual party, and I love him to bits, because he is essentially like another... He's an uncle to me. Yeah. His son and I fucking took bubble baths together, because we are literally a month apart. Oh, damn, yeah. Yeah, we were born almost the same time. Jeez, that's weird. Yeah, so we grew up together. He was my... Um, what, yeah, he was aunt? basically your uncle. Yeah, No, 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 that's the uncle. The, yeah. The, the son oh, sounds is something. like, was like Ed to me. Yeah. But like, diapers, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> like, diapers. And him and I have just kind of grown apart because we're, we're two completely separate people. Yeah. Completely different. But I feel like my uncle could maybe be okay doing yeah. that. Because he could he could see that my dad, my mum, they can't do it. He's a mutual person. I wouldn't let my friends do it because it's yeah. not something I want to put on them. I'm not saying that I want to put it on him, but but he could yeah, be a candidate. Because he's such a I love him to bits, but he's a mutual person. Yeah. Other than that, my partner. Kill me. <laughs> You're like, cool. <laughs> let me just double tap. You got yeah. this? Yeah. Or the guy that's coming in the semi. <laughs> Knock me out, bro. <laughs> Just all your friends are in the semi. Let's go. <laughs> you feel like, woo, kill Caitlin. Road trip. <laughs> More like road kill. <laughs> That's the name of your funeral. Just road kill. <laughs> I am fucking road oh killing. Can we? No. Let's not do that. Oh. Let's change this. <laughs> let's do something a bit nicer. What's the kindest thing you've ever done to someone? Not kill them. <laughs> <laughs> not kill them? Um... Fuck. The nicest thing. Well, the most recent nicest thing is I got someone into one of my mates M again. This is a this two M's. Um, actually, I'll call her Mel. I got uh, Mel yeah. a job. Yeah. I had worked so hard for it, and I put her resume out to all of my bosses. I talked to them. I talked her up. Yeah. And she got the job in the end. Yeah. So she's gonna be working down the corridor from me. It is amazing. It's fucking fantastic. But that's one of my recent good deeds mm-hmm. is that I just straight up put so much hard work and effort into getting her a position in where she is now. Yeah. She doesn't have a stalker in or she does have a stalker. But she's not at the place where the stalker was. She's not having to always look over her back. She's actually making some good money. Yeah, she's a lot safer. She's she's oh, she's going through her new chapter. She's becoming mature. She's got a mature job. Yeah. Making mature money! Hell yeah! So that's more the recent one. Yeah. We love Mel. She's amazing. Oh, Mel's fucking fantastic. I love it a bit. I know she probably... She likes listening to these podcasts. I know that for a fact. Wait, you do? I love you, Mel! <laughs> yeah, she actually <laughs> wants to be on one. But um, I'm not even saying this because I know she listens, but like, being very honest, she scares me for the sole factor of like, she's so pretty. I know! Why her, do you make friends with her? It, it just, she's so stunning! But like, and her, I love her personality. It's so, so like, it makes me so scared to talk to her sometimes because I'm like, you're actually just that pretty. That's me with Addie. Oh my god, her too. She's. Oh <laughs> Addie like, scares me. Oh my god, she's my biggest girl crush. Like, oh, oh she's, she's so a fucking girl boss. She is so. Oh my god, she's so nice and pretty. I'm just like, oh my but like, because I have hung out with Mel so much now and like, I talk so much. I've gotten so comfortable that I'm now no longer like at the whole I'm intimidated or yeah. I'm like kind of scared because you are fucking stunning. I'm more at the part of holy fuck, get out there, show the world what you got sort of thing. Because yeah. holy shit. I've never really like had a conversation with her, but like I think that's just more like my fault because I'm like I'm so intimidated by her. And literally like anytime I see like her take photos, I'm like, 
it. That'd be so cool. I know, be like on her Instagram or Snapchat. Most of her oh photos, I'm the one taking them now. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> It's like, it's such like a weird moment. I'm like, her and Annie, oh my god. But it's so it's, pretty. Yeah, so what intimidates, it, well, what's the most intimidating thing is because they are so stunning. That it, it, Unfortunately, it's the physical aspect. When I start talking to Mel, she's so down to earth. Yeah. Like, just wants conversation. And that's why her and I clicked so well is we would talk about fashion, then we talk about anything else in the world. We'd gossip, we'd do it, all of that sort of stuff. So Yeah, see, she, I'm like that with Lily. She is so beautiful, and I love chatting with her. Because, like, there's been a couple of times where, like, she's come with me when I take people home and stuff like yeah. that. And we've literally, like, just sat in the car and chatted about politics. We've oh, been, I don't like politics. We straight up <laughs> talked about politics to, like, Greek mythology to I will get astronomy. On mythology. And then straight back to, like, World War II history to, like... Literally just, like, bouncing around, talking about, like, skin problems. Like, literally everything under the sun. Yeah. We'll talk about it within, like, in half an hour. And I'm like, I love this. See, that is some really good conversation. I do love that type of shit where you just bounce and bounce and bounce. And sometimes you circle back because you miss something. Yeah, and I love doing that. That's why, like, I have such an appreciation for Lily. Every time I'm like, oh, I miss our car chats. I hope you're doing well. She's (laughs) like, what? I miss you too. What's happening? And I'm like, mm. oh, nothing. She's like, oh, okay. But the thing That's is, it. she suits your personality. Yeah. Like, they're such great banter there. She's really cool. Which is on I mean, point. All of Aaron's friends kind of scare me because they're all really pretty and I don't understand. How are they all so pretty? Well, Aunt, uh, do you know what? As soon as Ant Boy got out of his costume. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's what I mean. All <laughs> of her friends are pretty. Yeah. You, Aaron, you got some pretty boys. <laughs> <laughs> you got some pretty people. Actually, Holy you got shit. some pretty boys and girls and... Is this non-binary hoes? <laughs> non-binary hoes? That's why I'm like just pretty people in general. I'm like, how do you, how do you pick them? <laughs> like, yeah, geez. Aaron, what's your secret? Do I need to work with you? Like, what the fuck is this? Because most of them are from uni. So I'm like, that's the ad like uni. Mind you, it's because, the, yeah, because the uni, they have millions and quinzillions and jillions of peoples there. So she just we... goes, mm, you're hot, I'll take you. <laughs> you're mine. <laughs> you see, whereas um, uh, we have six? maybe six people. We have five and a half. Yeah, well, I see um, I there. Yeah, that's why he's the half. Yeah, but yeah, I don't, I don't see him anymore. What the fuck? I know he took a week off of uni because he had hay fever. But, yeah. He was ready if you guys turn up. Easy, we shall do it in a moment. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we will come back in a minute because we got a couple more questions to go. So. Oh, fuck. Well, oh, we yeah. Film, we've been gone for a long time. Oh, yeah. So we're going to do a quick little, I don't know, sponsored bit. There's no sponsor, but like, I'll sponsor myself. <laughs> we're going to do a quick ad break where you can... Serene T sponsor us. Yeah, we'll plug our own shit in. And we'll plug see our own uni fucking shit in there. We'll see you in like five minutes. You won't notice a difference. We will, because we would have had food. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I'm not hungry hungry, thank fuck. Uh, hungry hungry hippos. <laughs> And we are back. All right, let's oh. finish some more questions for you today. <laughs> so in the few seconds we've been away, oh it's been like an hour. You had like a whole ass meal, not even. And you are dying. Like I'm you're dying. Pregnant. It's you, hilarious. I have like a food baby going on right now. It's the effect of the household, man. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. I am trying to breathe my way through it. My stomach's like, why you do this to me? Digest. It's okay, we've only got three questions left and then we're done, so. Oh god, I thank goodness. <laughs> it's so lovely. <laughs> my food being on baby. The podcast. My food baby's just like, ah. It's okay, we'll get birth soon. It's alright. I'm getting birth already. <laughs> oh my god, alright. Speaking of. <laughs> I'm not like, to breathe heavy. I'm like, how do I segue into this? <laughs> what is the question? What's your baggage? Oh, I'm like, I think it's a child. food baby right now. <laughs> oh. What's your baggage other than your food baby? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> um, um, you talk about emotional baggage? It just says, Physical what's your, baggage. What, just, just what's your baggage, honey? And under the eye bags, we don't carry them. <laughs> but they just carry on. You know what? Mine aren't that bad. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are like dependent. Yours depends quite literally on sleep. Or what stress. Is, yeah, mine's stress driven. Yeah. 
That's why one side's not much when the other side's like, kill me now. Because that's the side that twitches. <laughs> <laughs> that one's got the muscle. It's the side that twitches and dies repetitively. Oh, uh, I think... Baggage. Fuck. That's like a hard question because I'm yeah. like, is it to do with like relationships? Is it to do with yourself, who you are as a human? Because yeah, like th- this will be a whole other podcast is the whole ex, yeah, the exes. So I won't try and go too much on that emotional baggage. Oh god, I don't actually even know where I could start with this. It's <laughs> it's just too long of a list. It's not that it's too long, <laughs> but like I can't. There's so much specific. That's not in English. No, I understood that. No, but they won't. <laughs> you understand what I do. I think... Hold on. Baggage. Yeah, it's not necessarily, like... There's parts in an overall... Category. Yeah. That I can just kind of chuck it in there. But there's some really small, specific... I don't know. Can we just not put that part in the podcast? I'm like... I don't even know if I can function. Um, I think for me, like, what's your... I don't know. I'm just going to say, like, a negative part of myself. We'll just do that instead. Because I feel like baggage is such a difficult word to kind yeah. of comprehend. I think one of my flaws... We'll do that. What's your floor? <laughs> I feel flaw. Um, as dumb as it sounds, but, like, kind of trusting that people will kind of be there and or... I guess people, trusting people will be there for me, but also just, like, assuming people won't like lie and or like lie to me or would be like I guess I don't know how to like say it like my biggest floor is trusting people is, is kind of like a dumb way to put it I think for me that's like a but big like floor. that that's like the general yeah consensus of it that's like the general the trust one. yeah but because of your past mm. unfortunately tr- lies were very heavy in yeah, that. so trust is very hard to come by. And like very honestly, I think one of my flaws that I've been working on is like this sounds so bad, but like <laughs> doing ex- like minor experiments on people and not like social. Like, it's more social stuff where it's like I'm gonna see if I say this, how will you respond? You know, like yeah, it's nothing that's harmful, but it's more like what would get like trying to yeah. gauge their reaction. And I always tell people afterwards, I'm never gonna like leave it for. Maybe like like I think the longest maybe like two days if that like you know, it's just more of like hmm I'm curious to see if you give a shit about me. Let's see if you do. Oh look at that I was right you don't. Cool. Next. Yeah. I guess more along those lines. Mine un- <laughs> unfortunately dates back to the ex. Mm. I now struggle with a bit more on the emotional side of things. So I. I almost, I wish I could let myself love again, but I have built up that bit of that brick wall that I'm like, well, the last time I tried that fucking ended miserably. Yeah. Mind you, I was already like, emotionally, I was detached, but I was trying to hold on physically. Yeah, I agree on that. That's a whole other topic that we can delve into on another podcast. But yeah, it's more like the being able to be vulnerable again around like that one specific person yeah and i because of in high school i was friends with the popular girl i wasn't the popular girl Mm -hmm. which uh, couldn't fucking be popular if i wanted to (laughs) i just don't have that kind of social so much effort yeah that's what i'm thinking i see him now and i'm like jesus christ you're still at it High school mentality. I just could not do it. No, I couldn't either. I was classified as a nerd. Really? I just watched movies. <laughs> hmm. I was a movie. I was the movie dealer. But yeah, I straight up just watched movies. But we found. I found out because my mum was at a bar, and then she met um, some of these high school classmates that I had, and they re- they remembered her. Yeah. And they saw my photo on her phone, and. They thought, they quite literally said, oh, Caitlin, yeah, she was the nerd. I'm like, bro, I was failed maths. It's like, I wouldn't classify myself as a nerd. No. Okay. But it's, I don't know why I went off on that small tangent. No, you're fine. It's like. Wait, why did I go off on that tangent? Uh, you're talking about your flaws. Yeah, no, but there was a specific reason. I was trying to circle back. Fuck. I don't know. Oh, this ending podcast, you can quite literally <laughs> see my deterioration. <laughs> Okay, 
yeah, summarizing it, my emotional baggage or flaws is the vulnerability and the being able to get personal again with someone. Yeah. And deeply care about them because right now, of course I care about it's, a lot of people, but that's a different... It's a different connection. Yeah, that's a completely different connection there. So I haven't been able to go through that again. I I tried with some rebounds and then I tried again with a few others, but unfortunately, um, I just... I was always the second choice. Yeah. Which really put me down and I just... I just didn't know how to function because I was always labelled the second choice and hated it. So now I think that everyone's like, I'm the second choice to everyone. So that's like, yeah, it's that's not, an emotional issue. <laughs> it's not fun when that happens, unfortunately. No, and not when you're told straight to the face and then when everyone picks others over you, then come back and say, hey, by the way, no, I actually kind of did like you. And I'm like fully past them now, even though I put so much time, effort and money into them. Yeah. As we know, we can be the bank accounts. Oh, yes. <laughs> we are used to being called the sugar mums. Yeah, sugar fucking mummy. Which I hate. Uh, I hate it too. I That's... hate... This sounds really dumb. I'd rather you not tell me that and just let it be. Oh, I wasn't... Uh, sorry, they didn't call me the sugar mum, but we all knew that I bought everything. Mm. He told you you were the sugar mum, even though he was doing a decent job. So was mine, but... He earned shit tons more than me because at the time I only had like one job and even then it was 100 bucks a fortnight that's exactly yeah mine would be 100 maybe 200 depending on the shift I worked yeah and I'm like that was it and there was periods of months where I didn't get paid because there was nothing happening yeah and they still expect you to find money to pay for everything yeah that wasn't fun yeah my bank account hated me at that point in time oh it's always interesting yeah speaking of interesting things <laughs> What's I feel like that emotional baggage can get cut out. That's nah, fine. It's entertaining. <laughs> of interesting things, what still excites you? Whether it's about a person, whether it's about anything random. So, like, for me, I still get excited when I play, like, Super Smash Bros. I don't care how oh. much I play that game. Do you know what I mean? I went a completely different way in my head. But, like, that's just one thing. Like, as I'm, like kind of if you want to count video games as childish or whatever like that's my little childish thing where i'm like i still get excited for playing like that and zelda like the <laughs> nintendo franchise yeah. makes me so excited unfortunately my mind went to something really really deep because we we're on the that yeah you can do that. my mind straight up went to like a genuine romantic connection like yeah. i'm so excited there's one thing i want to do with my partner is i want to dance in our in the middle of our kitchen to some random song just nice and slow where it's comforting. Yeah. Don't care what the song is. I don't care how I'm dressed. If I'm in a full length fucking ball gown or if I'm in my pajamas. In your pajamas. In my pajamas. I, oh, I just, that, It's that intimate moment. I just want to be cared for. Yeah. And if, hypothetically, if I up and disappeared, I want them to notice and be like, where are you? I'm a little concerned. And then that's the type of, I don't need a stalker. I don't need anything like that. I just need someone to care. Yeah. And that's it. But other things I get excited about is like, I don't know why, but I'm still a full nut for Barbie, Bratz and Winx Club. Yeah. I fucking love it. And I love Winx. I love my manhwa. So my yaoi, BL, manga, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I love reading it. Yeah, see, I'm... Where you're that, I'm more of, like, the fantasy books and... Your fantasy books. I'm the smutty books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, some of the fantasies might have that. Oh, yeah, but they like... got fairy porn in it. That's fine. <laughs> I don't say that. <laughs> hey, you can't tell me I'm wrong. Well, not the ones I've read. <laughs> I read the prequel before that happened. Oh, my God. You you probably skipped those pages, too. <laughs> I know. I've got all the books only before that happens. And then Shanna's got all the books that where it happens. I would be the Shanna. I'd be the books <laughs> after that. That's so funny. Because, like, she's reading all... Like, she's read them all now. And I'm like, but you don't know what happened before. She's like, ah, baby, I don't need to know what happened I don't before. fucking care. I can put two or two together. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm very much always been into like the Mortal Instruments series I've got all of those books any Cassandra Clare books any well I'm pretty much almost any of the Holly Black books which is all your fantasy type of stuff yeah um, even like the Divergent series I've got all of those do you know what 
when it comes to books, like, I will only read romance. Mm -hmm. It is so hard, for, like, it's some romance with a bit of mystery and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But I don't enjoy reading anything else. I do. Yes. I think it depends. Like, I uh, halfway read through uh, The Theory of Everything, a brief theory, theory of everything, the one by uh, Stephen... Stephen Hawking, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say Stephen King. I'm like, run, Stephen. <laughs> um, book yeah. joy. Stephen Hawking. Yeah, I've got that book. I read half of that because I did that on Easter. Um, and I have, need to get back to it. So I have, like, that. Damn, that was a fucking while ago. It was, yeah. And I... You're going to forget the theory of everything. <laughs> but, <laughs> and, like, I've got behind me some... World War Two books. Yeah, and, like, yeah. I want to try and get through. So these are the, like... Winston Churchill, the Second World War books. So all of the, the whole entire like hardcover, just collection. Yeah, that set like just the look of them. Yeah, because it was for it was given to my grandfather, and so he, when he sadly passed away, my grandmother was like, I know you love books. Do you want to take any of them? And like the entire collection, and it's pretty like good considering it's from like, I don't know, I can't remember when. ASMR. Yeah, because he got that. He got given all of these as a gift. Yeah. When, because he used to work prison guard. Yeah. Wasn't it? He used to run one of the prisons, and they gave it to him. I think as like a parting present or something. So, Some weird ass parting present. Because they knew how much he loved. Oh, okay. Like history and especially like World War, and so it talks about like literally like, the first chapter I see is the onslaught of Japan. See, I. Oh, there's been some books that I've just had to read. Yeah. But there's been, like, there's a few of them that I do enjoy. So one was, um, I believe it was called The Rug Maker. Oh, I think I've heard of that. Yeah, I, it took me so long to read it because it was for school. Mm. Outside of school, I could probably read that in a few. Yeah, whenever school gives you stuff, it's like, I don't want to read this. But you know what, the only thing that school gave me that was part of like that kind of style was we had to watch um, a movie called Shutter Island. That's oh. with Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes, yes. I thoroughly enjoy that movie. Really? Yeah. Because of how... Do you know what, it's so weird. Because in English, how we broke it down and how we determined the... Um, uh, the meanings behind a lot of things. You know how you do that. Yeah. In like, what was the meaning of this curtain being here? Like, fuck, fine. It's I. funny. You guys did that. We did that for the song Young, du Young Dumb and Broke. <laughs> young <laughs> Dumb and Broke High School Kids. Our teacher's like, so why do you say that? Because well, we are young, we are fucking dumb, <laughs> and we're broke. And because, yeah, da, 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 da. We did it for that. Um, she just did that for shits and giggles, but, um, and then we could choose any song we wanted to and break it down ourselves. Yeah. But like the, the year before that, we oh, makes me so mad. Mm -hmm. We had to watch Romeo and Juliet, but the newer one with Leonardo DiCaprio, that movie I boils don't like that it one. It boils my blood. It makes me so mad. The original is so much better. I Anyone agree. who says anyways is just for shit takes. So the only reason why, so I am in agreement. I prefer the original to. Oh yeah. I don't really like the remake with Leonardo DiCaprio. Nah, it's just a shit take. But I do like the costumes, especially at the big ball. I'm there for the costumes. That is yeah. brilliant. Um, outside of that, no. Nah. The whole movie is literally just making fun of. I don't think I've original. ever finished it because I just. I had to because class. And you I was class, yeah. Everyone well, was free like, time. Oh, everyone was like, "This is so much better," and I literally was like. Did we watch the same film? Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, nah, I They're don't. They're with pistols and wearing Hawaiian shirts. That's what I didn't like. Why are you wearing Hawaiian shirts? Why the? Why is there Hawaiian shirts? Like what? No. Like I don't mind like having to do a almost like a modern take on it with like you know mafia. And, but not like, the Hawaiian. Where shirts. the fuck did the Hawaiian shirts come from? Whoever know. was in charge of that, please. What the fuck were you on? I don't know. Like, so we watched that, and then we had to watch... I know we read slash watched uh, Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Yeah, I've watched that one. And then we watched... That was intense. I'm trying to remember what the other one was called. Uh, all I remember from the movie is that everyone was crying at near the end. It was to do with... I might have been actually Boy in the Striped Pajamas. No, actually, I actually don't remember now. Do they have the one where it's like the gas chambers? It's Boy it? in the Striped Pajamas. Yeah, so it's like gas chambers. And yeah, it's Boy in the Striped yeah, Pajamas. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it was the same film. I don't know. I thought they were different. I remember everyone crying and I'm just sitting there like... Oh, oh I know the other one. one. I know the one. 
Bookkeeper. The one with the book burning? No, we didn't watch that one. Fucking what? We did. That <laughs> sucks for you. I actually didn't mind it. It was like, shh, it's up with an S. Oh no. It's a boy in the stripe pajamas. Bananas in, in pajamas. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at that, but yeah. Boy in the stripe pajamas was. I didn't cry, but it was very. I will say it is quite educational and from a different standpoint. So, like, that didn't bother me as much. I I knew that it had bothered others. Yeah. Because of, you know, the gas chambers and all that, like, the death. And unfortunate, or kind of like that, some of the others, other students were unable to fully watch it. So, mm-hmm. I can understand that. But at the same time, this is history. Unfortunately, this ain't pretty. Yeah, unfortunately, it's what's this happened. Is just what was the thing. Yeah. Oh, and all those lives lost it genuinely was just horrifying i could not imagine having to go like just live through that that time period yeah because that alone like just knowing that in the world people are just getting gassed it is and it's such a weird kind of time frame when you think about it i don't know like something about it just Mm. seems really odd it's scary how like it what what it was like it's been almost a century now yeah or i think close to close to we're roughly at there but that was just and, and not the fact that, that long ago. And the fact we're still like kind of re- like learning about it and like watching new movies about it because like Dirk, uh, was it was a Durkin, D- Duncan, something like that. One of the, that was a movie that came out long ago. The in- Imitation Game was about it. I should don't mind the Imitation I Game. I love that movie. That was excellent. So I only watched that this year, probably it's a few months beautiful. ago. Beautiful. It's such a beautiful movie. Because it was on one of those. Oh, you know how Netflix. Sorry, I just remember what it's called. Schindler's List. Oh, oh, okay. There we go. I remember now. <laughs> That's right. I don't... So it was about Schindler, a German industrialist and member of the Nazi par- party, tries to save his Jewish employees after witnessing the persecution of Jews in Poland. So he was one of like the good people, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, I was literally like scrolling through every single movie made by World War II, and I'm like, where <laughs> is this film? Because yeah, I remember he like talked about like. Him, and they had talked about like all the different like symbols and like you know, they had to wear and being like categorized and all that stuff. Because I vividly remember that movie for the sole factor of there's a scene where obviously because nothing was pixelated. It's um, black and white. This film. Y- yeah, I think they have like bits of color for like yeah. some parts. Yeah, a splash of color. Yeah, for like the coat or like the blood or whatever. Yeah, the symbolic reference. <laughs> I remember literally there's like one part where I think it's it is Schindler Liam or someone. Liam Neeson's in there. Yeah. Oh my god, they got like really good cast in there. Yeah, you can see one of their entire um, nether regions. Uh, hold on, who's? I don't remember. It might have been Liam Neeson's. I don't remember. I don't. I feel like it'd be a Ra- like Ralph. <sighs> Honestly, I don't fully remember, but I just remember little guy. Oh, like Ralph. I feel like he'd be no, the one. No, 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 it wasn't him. I remember that. Definitely wasn't him. I reckon it was Liam's. Oh, I don't I, I think it might have been. I can't remember fully, but I just remember like my teacher freaking out seeing it on screen. Because we were like, <laughs> you're nine, all girls school. And she went. Oh, and then a penis and she pops paused, up on the screen. Yeah, and she paused it on the actual like picture. And then she couldn't get it to unpause. It froze. <laughs> oh my God. That's the worst timing. <laughs> and she's panicking. So she unplugs it. And it still wouldn't get rid of it. <laughs> so she literally, like, turned... Like, she just, like, turned off the projector at that point. She was like, that's it. Oh, turned it off. Jesus. Like, managed to fix it on the laptop after I helped her out. And then we got it to work. And she's like, I'm sorry, girls. And all the girls are, like, laughing, you know, taking photos. As you do. Hold on. I just want to see... Like... I don't want to see his nether regions. Anyway, this is not just a topic. <laughs> I was going to say... We were right, going to Okay. Literally the last question. <laughs> the last question. All right, moving forward from that, we don't know who the naked guy is. I think, or I think it's just a prisoner. It might have been. I don't remember. Anyway. Someone put it in the comments. Final round. <laughs> did anybody save your life without realizing? If so, what did you wish you could say to them? Or what do you wish to say to them? I already said it to mine. <laughs> I spent my birthday doing that pretty much, so... Uh, oh yeah shout out to my homeboy yeah <laughs> oh my god that was intense that was 
that oh my god that birthday speech man i you straight up had talked about almost quite literally everything yeah that was the scariest moment for me for a long time it's funny because like my dress was a little bit bigger so it helped but like my legs were shaking violently i could not tell that's what i was hoping i thought i could like uh, sometimes you could see your hands shake a little but you kept it pretty well together i think it helps because that's why i was like erin come stay next to me yeah. i need a light also because i help. can't see for shit and there was parts where i would like look away for a second because i had to and she would notice i couldn't find where i was and i'd start to panic point, yeah so she did the whole like little just yeah just there and i'm like thank you <laughs> yeah um that was a hard like it's weird because there were two parts that were the well i think yeah two or three parts that were like the hardest for me to say one was chatting about like all my like quote-unquote issues yeah because those... i'm like no i'm like not really anyone fully knows all of them so i'm like that scared me yeah people um, know bits and pieces yeah so i was like okay i will just say it and then obviously kind of talking about the saving my life type of situation that was scary because he didn't know um like most didn't really know and then the scariest part for me as well was like i don't know why i got really nervous talking about matt's particular part which mm. is weird because well no i would have been i said scared. it i said it thousand like i've said it plenty of times to him before so there was no difference but but it was now putting it out there to everyone else yeah i think something about it just kind of i think it scared me because like i, I was just so unsure of everything so i'm like yeah I'm like, what, what am I doing now? But with the saving life, that was Ed. No, hold on. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, yeah. That was the other E. It was the um, other E boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a sweetheart. I remember because I, I, I think him. I must have got confused with the E. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you know, I've said it to him, and I'll keep saying it to him for the rest of my life. But I was, I literally like, when as soon as I told him, and he hugged me, he was like. You might you literally like you're someone I look up to, like and I appreciate it. and I just literally like repeatedly I was just like thank you. I was like thank you, you know. You, you I kind of owe all this to you, so thank you. And then you start getting upset and I'm like, ah, ah, like don't do this and man, thank you <laughs> And then he like got pulled aside, I'm like, Where'd you go? And I'm like, Oh, it's Matt. Hi. Hi, what up bro? I Hug. like you <laughs> <laughs> He literally like I could kind of hear because I was too busy like trying to Elijah quietly, I just hear move Elijah and I'm like Oh my god. What? And then it was Matt giving me a big hug. And I'm like, what is happening? Mind you, I sat next to Matt when this whole thing was going. Yeah. And I <laughs> I kept nudging him. I'm like, it's you. It's <laughs> you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I even tapped him all the way. I'm like, I seriously tapped him mm. and pointed at you. I said, that's you, bro. <laughs> when the power was happening or the speech? The speech. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I tapped him. I said, hey, she's talking about you. She's <laughs> you. <laughs> Yeah, that was... You didn't mind that, because I was trying to get him, you yeah. know, involved. That was definitely scary. <laughs> but he took it well. Yeah. He there just hasn't know. given us a response. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wanted to talk to him a bit about that, um, but... But y'all need to catch up as an individual. We do. We haven't caught up since the birthday. Expecting a birthday present. Well, I don't I don't expect anything in general, but... Um, well, he has it. Yeah, but I still don't expect anything. Do you know you, what I mean? you want a letter. A letter proclaiming <laughs> your love. <laughs> I mean, that Did would I be great. Oh that my god, I think exactly I would just, happened. like, actually just sit there dumbfounded. I'd just be like... <laughs> sit there, frame it in the car. I remember like, what do I this do? forever. I'm like, what is this? I literally... This, oh my god. If you're hearing this, Matt, I'm so sorry. But, like, <laughs> I, I had, like, a dream randomly where, like, um, as he, like, leaves... For his departure or whatever for his you know training for stuff um like i had dreamt that he'd given me a letter and he was like don't open it until i leave and that's when he you had said it me and i'm like one. if that happens i'm gonna be so upset <laughs> but that might be when he has the confidence i'll be like you motherfucker yeah give him a call like when, when he lands it you fucking bitch how dare you i'll be like i love you <laughs> i'm like where where's the damn station you're sending me a Send me the address. <laughs> send me the address. <laughs> I'm sorry, my brain went to send me a dick pic. Ew. I'm sorry. No. I don't want this happening. I don't want that. Because I saw your teeth clench and I'm like, duh, dick, what? And I'm like, the address. I, know you the I address. don't want a pic of any of that. I'm 
Oh, they're disgusting. never pretty. Dick pics aren't pretty. No. I fucking hate them. They either look like a fucking flaccid mushroom, or they just look like a, <laughs> a piece of pastrami. See? <laughs> <laughs> like, you cannot tell me I'm wrong. In the angles, guys will get somewhat creative with those angles. It will be down by the ball. See, I, like, I think this is funny because you're thinking I've gotten one, and that's funny. <laughs> oh, I've gotten too many. But it's like the picture, like they'll take it from the angle oh of the ball sack and it's, then upwards on their quote unquote abs. It's so. And then it's just ugh. like, I don't really care about that. Or they'll take it, it down and sounds, it's just smothered in bush. I don't like it that. It just sounds horrible. I'm like, why? Why do you think that Like, that's a good thing to do? Oh, but I know one of my mates, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> this is very off topic. Yeah. Um, she, had, she was giving a guy oral. Mm. And he hadn't trimmed his bush. Yeah. She had braces on. Oh. <laughs> so you can see when two oh, and two no. led. She got his pubes stuck in her braces. Oh, honey. <laughs> I felt so bad you for You poor it. thing. That would have been a pain to get out. Yeah, because oh. quite literally she was, she stopped, but she, I'm for, hold on. She still has a dick in her mouth. Mm. <laughs> she still had it. I was... When she told me this, I was mortified for her. And I, I, I did unconsciously keep looking at her teeth. <laughs> Thankfully, like, she had got everything fixed and all that. I don't know how they'd fixed it. I didn't really question it too Could far from there. Could you imagine explain that to them? Like, your optometrist. No, not optometrist. What are they called? <laughs> dentist? Your dentist, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, no. Did you know your dentist knows when you give head? Because mm. they, you have bruising on the top of your... Yeah, um, on the roof email. which is weird. So anyone who's trying to give head or anything like that, don't say you have to. Like I wouldn't, <laughs> but um, don't suck too hard. You'll bruise it, the roof of your mouth, and if you go to the dentist, they will know. Just or say, you know, just don't go to the dentist in general. Oh, so you <laughs> just don't go to the dentist. No, that's, that's not my reason why. I'm that's just like. <laughs> Don't suck dick. It's, it's unhygienic. Uh, to all the guys who do wash their dick, thank you. To all those who don't, get your dick stinky cheese out of here. Oh, sorry. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Matt with the leather. <laughs> sorry. I'm like... I'm I just, sound like a kettle. I'm just like a hopeless romantic who just <sighs> likes basic love and you're right here like, mmm, dick. And I'm like, no, I don't oh. want the... Well, I actually... Hold on. I can't say I don't want the dick. But I don't want it like that. I, just I want the really sweet... do want genuine romance. I want the sweet home. I want to be swept off my feet while keeping on the floor because I'm a heavy <laughs> bitch and I have very bad insecurities when I'm being lifted. So, <laughs> sweep my heart away Take and guide me to the couch. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, sit me down. I don't know if I can. Yeet me across the room. Don't get too far. Oh no, I would not like that. I no. Have that. no, thank you. <laughs> it ends up in lots you of know, bruises. Shut up. <laughs> it does. Oh god. I'm just saying. <laughs> it does. Oh Jesus. Okay. Anyway, back to it. What was the last question? We just did the last question. Yeah, but what was it again? <laughs> you want to remind what me? Would you say I'm to gonna... the person that saved your life. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, else. I don't know. <laughs> Tight. Um, no, but there was one time. So it's not necessarily saving my life. It's saving me from a world of fucking chaos. Yeah. Um, I was in Kuala Lumpur and me... So my stepdad and my mum, we were all walking down Chinatown and me being me. Unfortunately, I was a small little white girl. Mm-hmm. Blonde hair, blue eyes, the whole nine yards. Yeah. And unfortunately, my mum had started picking up on the old men kind of coming in towards us, looking and all that. Ah, she. So my mum said, just pop a hat on, darling. And we went into formation. My mum walked in front. No, my stepdad walked in front of me. I was holding his belt loop in case I got grabbed. It was me in the middle. And then it was my mum behind me. Yeah. I walked the whole way back home. My mum gently sat me down because I... At one point, there was this guy that tried to grab my hand mm-hmm. and take me away. My mum slapped it and said, like... Yeah. Oh, sorry, hiccup. Um, said, fuck off. And then we bolted out. So we got back to the hotel. My mum sat me down and said, so the reason why this happens... Like, she explained it, the yeah. sex trafficking, all that sort of stuff, and how 
blonde hair, blue eyes, all that sort of crap. And <laughs> the next day, I went from nice, beautiful dresses, arms out, all that sort of stuff to, sorry, with my hair down, to hair went up in a ponytail or a plait. I put my hat on, I had my long pants on or three quarters, and I always wore a top so I could cover up as much as I could. Yeah. I went from being very, very girly girl to fuck off you, dirty. See you next few things? Yeah, very like girly girl to tomboy. Yeah. I'm not saying that I wasn't tomboy, but I yeah. wasn't. At that, that like was appearance time, wise. That was the time where I wasn't in either category because I still kept going between the two. Yeah. So I really on that trip became a tomboy because I was shit scared of being taken. Yeah. But I guess that might have been the only time my life was ever in danger, so thanks mum and stepdad, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> but I saved a shark. Oh. He what? Was, mind you, hold on. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> hold on. Do any context? On. Yeah, with a bit of context. It's not a proper, like, big six, seven foot fucking great white shark. This is one of those tiny ones you can have in aquariums. Mm-hmm. I had actually, there was actually two, we had two of them and they both jumped out of our, t- its tank. It got into the kitchen and luckily enough, it was still flopping around. I wasn't scared of it. So I yes. quickly grabbed it and I chucked it back in the tank. That was fine. So I saved him. But we were missing one. Mm-hmm. And what we had noticed is we had a small little shipwreck, um, t- like little decoration oh, there. Yeah, that, yeah. You, that fish, because we had a small ones as well, that they would swim in there, swim out, all that kind of shit. We realized, well, actually, I did, that the shark went in, saw that it couldn't get out, tried to do a U turn, so go back out the way it came, and it got stuck in a bend. Aww. And so Dad looked, and he was like, I don't know where it is. So I, then I looked in the ship, and I said, I found the shiny. <laughs> this is me <laughs> being me, shiny. like, very, very, very young. I found the shiny because its scales were so beautiful and shiny. Like, the yeah. skins, it wasn't really scales, but it was scaly skin mm-hmm. it was so shiny and i found it i told dad and by the time we got him out it had a few cuts and like a bit of marks because it really wedged itself in there yeah struggling to breathe but i will always remember the time i saved a small baby shark that's really cool <laughs> but that was it i just found it and dad actually did the saving but i pointed him out yeah so you tag take part of credit you tag teamed it <laughs> oh no Oh, yeah, why is that a bad it. thing? You're like a new. I thought of the sexual reason, honey. Tag team. <sighs> so when a boy and a girl... <laughs> well, when there's two, three people, you have one taking it, one giving it. The next person who tires out, tag! You're in. Why? It's called tag team, honey. Why? You're tagging it out. Why? So, it's like I was watching all the podcasts and I learned what the Eiffel Tower meant in that terminology and I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, um, the tag team. Uh, I, like, I don't understand. <laughs> Thank you, Zane and Heath, from Unfiltered Podcasts. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's just when someone takes it, you have one person going at it. If they get tired, they can swap out with their part, like, with the other person. Why is this like a wrestling match? It kind of is. You tag. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, someone wants to get pounded 24-7 and the other's tired. Fuck if I know. I haven't been in that situation yet. Why do you say yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't predict the future. Nah, I hope my parents never see this. Keep your options <laughs> open, I guess. <laughs> Keep my options open. I don't know, man. Oh. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got... I'm... So I'm going to a coma state right, uh, comatose state right now. That's fine. We're going to do another podcast another time where we chat about our lovely love lives. Oh. And how that has gone fantastically well. How that we'll... failed miserably. Yes. The trauma we got from it. PTSD. Mm, yes. That one's going to be slightly... That's going to be like real rage... Rage. It's going to be a mixture of rage and sadness. Rage I think. and depression. Yeah. What a you good band name. That. Raging depression. I'd Raging go. depression? I would see that band. <laughs> I feel like they would only do breakup songs, but it would either be in like... <laughs> Taylor Swift knockoffs. I feel like it'd be like either really emo like breakup songs. Nah, it's gotta be screamo, mate. But like a combination. No, oh, you're gonna have screamo? Yeah. And then maybe like just like the bridge before yeah. the chorus. It's like, you know, it's like, wake me up inside. And the guy's like, wake, wake me up. up. 
Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like they're going to have, like, a mixture. It would be, like, really, like, screamo songs, but then they need, obviously, some songs to, like, kind of give their throats a bit of a break. So they would have some, like, mellow songs and it would go back. And it's, like, a little yeah, fluctuation. Yeah, to ACDC where the lead singer just screams and doesn't sing anymore and it sounds horrible. Bah! Just repetitively. Yeah. Just ba 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 but yeah, so the next one that um, will have me on it yes, it will. will be about the exes. Yeah. And how much <laughs> and I how much, have learnt. And how much better we're doing. Oh my god, I'm doing so much better. My oh bank yeah. account loves me. He's in a dirty ditch right now, <gasps> and oh I'm god. flourishing about to buy myself a house. I love that for you. I, I don't know, because mine me. blocked me, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> oh no, I blocked him, so I don't know half the time, but... I couldn't tell you. I still catch up. Like, we go to the family gatherings, and because mm. his... Um, mum and stepdad are friends with our group. Yeah. So they come in and I get the juicy goss from them. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just have no association with them at all. <laughs> yeah, you know sometimes it's better that yeah. way. Uh, yeah. <sighs> anyway, we shall see you guys, or he- I guess hear from you guys next time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Send us any questions you want to have us ask. Oh, yeah, for like, sure. To, like, Chuck anything you want in the comment section below and you can send us an email as well. You can definitely do that as well. If you've got some juicy stories you want to share with just us or if you want us to read <laughs> oh, on the podcast. I need someone to tell me some go- goosey. <laughs> some goosey stories. <laughs> some goosey. Some juicy stories because I oh, yeah. fully love that shit. Yeah, any of that, send it our way. We'll be more than happy to read and it. And obviously, if you do want us to maybe read it on one of the podcasts, please let us know. If not, we definitely won't like, oh, yeah, for sure. say anything about it. But We respect pl- please. you guys. I absolutely love being a part of this goss and when people shit talk others ugh. about like the exes and all that sort of stuff. Like, ugh. Yes, it's definitely great. <sighs> yes, we shall, I love it. We shall talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Peace out.